what up, what up? I need, I need that sports, sports and cycle too. We were at Steve Kim. Got Trent in the cut. Yeah, Trent in the cut. Coach, 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 coach. Uh, yeah, yeah. Where you at, man? Where you at, man? Uh, uh, in the gym, we're shooting. I'm Durant. You ain't shooting John Moran. No, no. Darnell is the ball state legend. I'm the Warren Central High School legend. I'm proven with a reliable source. Straight from the mouth of the horse. Smitty and JB. JB and Smitty from West Coast to Yo. I love talking talking ball. It's, it's nice to connect with with guys that, that are like-minded and, and just are real and genuine. Better stay in your lane. Hop, hop, you, you are fucking insane. You, dude, what? You just will not give this guy his flowers. What is up? What is wrong with you? Oh, you must have thought I was a bitch. Got to get back to letting the baby cry a little bit to see if they can soothe themselves. That's a bar. Issues get pressed so past it, don't get sacked like bags and baggage. Smitty and Jason Brown, kill the ass a rap. We what the game's been missing, we switched it and filled the gap. I identified him after his third fight, and I said that guy should be a star. I'm so proud of, you know, the show, bro. With the gap, Smitty and Jason Brown. What up, what up, what up? We're in the building. It is Merciless Monday right here on the Coach JB Show with Big Smitty. We got a loaded lineup today. Big Matt McChesney joins us talking some Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, Colorado University football, latest in the news as he goes on Gilly's podcast and says some stuff. We're going to break that down. Plus, Jeff Nadu joins us to talk Sweet 16. First time all the ones and all the two seeds have advanced this deep into the Sweet 16. Not one of them have been eliminated. We're going to dive into that as well. But it is Merciless Monday on this Merciless Monday. Right here on the Coach AB Show with Big Smitty. Become a member today. Tap the like button. Subscribe. Become a member of our Discord Slap Nation. Download the Discord app and find Slap Nation. Become a member today. Chat with us every day. Plus our fine guests that we have on the show. It's going to be a hell of a show today. Big Matt McChesney, Jeff Nadu, all join us to talk about Sweet 16, March Madness, and we are the realest show on planet Earth. We got a hierarchy and discipline issue here in America. Not only in society where kids tell adults what they will and won't do, but in sports as the players have taken control. And where has that gotten us? Well, some of you may think it's allowed the student athletes to be paid. Well, sure, some have gotten paid, while the majority struggle. The same goes for the real world. 1% of the real world, the general population, I like to call them, all think because a Theo Vaughn, a Pat McAfee, or your favorite TikToker IG model has blown up, you seem to think you will be able to blow up as well. Listen, you quitting your job to chase that dream is admirable. But listen, I chase dreams every day. But I have to face reality. So I'm all for chasing a dream, but also have a reality. And by chasing a dream with no reality, you end up broke, dead, or in jail. We no longer force. Yes, I'm using the word force our children to be children. We allow them to do things adults do, like drive fast cars before we teach them the value of a dollar. Before we teach them how to maintain a vehicle, how to change the oil, the brakes, etc., Now we teach them to go out and drag race them while drinking. These kids think they owe, we owe them something. We don't owe them nothing. We had buckets, shitty ass whips as kids. Smitty still has a shitty car. I still got a shitty car. These kids get Hellcats as their first car. And we expect them not to wreck them, not to do dumb shit. Ask Jalen Carter. Travis Etienne's little brother just got caught at Georgia. Just for example, there's many, many more kids out here that I know for a fact that have been enabled beyond belief. Listen, adults allow it or coach it. And with the latest prime podcast on Gilly show saying that he won't go to certain places is why we have a young people problem right now. Period. Can't tell me any different either. We're going to dive into it. But now to sports. Dion goes on Gilly's podcast and says Shadur Sanders and Travis Hunter will pick where they end up going. 
Bill Self says he has been looking forward to next season for the past few months now, and now he's taking heat in the mainstream media. We're going to dive into that. Georgia's running back ETN arrested on DUI charges. Can't wait to dive into that one. Plus, more Otani news. And we will break down the Sweet 16 with Jeff Nadu. All the ones and two seeds have advanced for the first time. But before we begin, my wonderful co-host, Ball State legend, I'm glad he got made it home. He came out last weekend. We had a ball. We did a live show. It went really well. A lot of you guys enjoyed it. We're going to have to do it more. I'm glad he made it back because he's one of those young cats, but he got a bucket. He don't have the Hellcat. And, you know, he was loaded. And he got back home. So I'm glad he got back home. But our Naptown's finest, 317s, Far East Side great, AR5 defending, Lamar Jackson loving. LeBron hairline having Fox Sports very own. Welcome, our main man, Big Smitty, in the chat. Clap it up. What's going on, yo, yo? Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? If you can hear me, clap once. If you can hear me, clap twice. What's going on, y'all, man? It's your boy, Big Smitty. What? <laughs> JB, he learned how to act now. I taught you how to act a little bit, man. I've been acting. He been nah, but be real. You've said it before. You said yeah. I'm a hell of an actor on this show. Keep it real. I mean, you do like those little low budget movies clips, but like I do real clips, like real movies. Huh? How, how many how many movies have you done, JB? Uh, I've, I've been a few. Yeah, 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 yeah. We had a good time though, JB. Man, we had a good time, man. You you fixed some fire ass tacos day one, day two. You got a little lazy. You had to order a pizza. That's cool though. Pizza was good. You you, know you wanted a pizza. I didn't, I was gonna cook. But yes, you yeah, wasn't really yeah, feeling yeah. it. You got home. You was tired. Yes. They tell the story they want you to hear. They uh, BPS. They he he don't want to tell the people what the real was. What did you say? You should cook, JB. You gonna cook tomorrow all day. Blah blah blah. blah. And you all listen right. to me. Yes, when have you ever yes, listened I to me? This. I do this, Mitty. <laughs> when have you ever listened to anything I've ever said or or gave you as advice? You've never done it ever. So the one time I do it. You gonna listen to me? Nah, bro. You be real. You didn't feel like cooking twice because you had to cook a whole thing for your next door neighbor, which was amazing, by the way. Shout out to you for doing that. You didn't feel like doing a back to back situation. You were exhausted the night I left. I left at 10 30, 11 o'clock. He was over there dozing off, falling asleep. Hey, he had just left. He I, he just was exhausted. I said, you know what, JB? I'm gonna leave, let you get some good sleep. I drove home around 11 o'clock, 11 30. Halfway sleep, loaded, cigar, barely made it home. Thank God I'm here today. <laughs> oh, we got a lot to discuss today. It's Merciless Monday, Big Smitty. I'm in a merciless giving type of attitude. You can't spell like, merciless right now. Uh, M-E-R-C-I-L-E-S-S. I have an issue right now. I got a major problem right now with uh, I'm merciless today. I'm going to be honest with you. It's going to be a merciless type of. Uh, well, let's, huh, fuck let's do it. Week. Let's do it. It's going to be merciless start this week off. Uh, but before that, let's get to the quote of the day brought to you by betonline.ag. What up, what up, what up, man? The real Coach AB here for the Coach AB Show with Big Smitty. We got a proud new sponsor, of course, for the second part of the year, and that's Bet Online. Continue to be your number one source for all basketball wagering needs, including pro and college hoops throughout the year. March Madness is here. Join us every Monday and Friday with Jeff Nadu as we will pick them and up to minute odds, stats, and trends. You can follow your favorite team's path to the playoffs with in-game live betting contests and all the best player props. Experience the world's best wagering platform anytime from your desktop to your mobile device. Head on over to Bet Online today. Become part of the team and remember to use promo code Believe B L E A V for fifty percent off plus welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. Peace. Um, somebody said, "Ain't no way he spelt that shit." Slick Nick, fuck you, Tom. I'm the fucking best speller you've ever fucking been around, seen. Uh, B P S A Saint Saint spoken Saint. with. I've been the best saint uh, you ever seen. Um, <laughs> we got a lot to break down today. Oh, shout out to you, Breast Planet and Planet Earth, uh, six man of the year. Ooh, six shout man out. of the year. Okay. That's how you start a Monday off. Yeah, shout out to you. Uh, shout out to you. 
let's let me know if y'all need me to go down to Orlando for the owners' meetings. D Jones said. Mm. I posted a video, on? Smitty, because before we get started, there's a video of a. Uh, I don't know if you saw this, but like I see it. Santa Rosa County, Florida. We got a Santa Rosa County in Cali too. Sheriff came out and said, Oh yeah, this, listen to this. To the person, we don't know what homeowner, which homeowner shot at him. Um, I guess they think that they did something wrong, which they did not. If somebody's breaking in your house, you're more than welcome to shoot them in Santa Rosa County. We prefer that you do actually. Um, so Whoever that was, you're not in trouble. Come see us. We have a gun safety class we put on every other Saturday. And if you take that, you'll shoot a lot better and hopefully you'll save the taxpayers money. Wrap <laughs> it up for that guy. Um, I mean, dog, out here in Cali, I mean, listen, there's a lot of states. If somebody enters your house, and you can do that and, and not ha face, you know, but a lot of my buddy, good friend of mine, uh, Smitty, you, you know, Spree, my boy Spree, his, That's my his neighbor we grew up with, um, you know, he had a past and all that stuff. He was out in them streets and all that. But the cat broke in, man. And uh, not only did he fire rounds at his daughter, he broke in to rob the house and in the hood. And my boy shot him, killed him and mm -hmm. uh, went to jail, dog. Like what? Yeah. Went to jail. So there's states that allow it, but there's also states that you have to fend off for your life. Like you're going to jail that night and you're going to go to jail and and face and have to fight why you defended your home and your family to a br intruder. Like there's states that and eventually you'll you probably get off, but you're going to go through drama. Florida's like, nah, just come in. I don't care who did it. <laughs> just come on in and we'll, you'll be right up back home. Like, right. like dog. It's just crazy how how I don't I don't understand how uh, that shit happens. But shout out to Florida for allowing that have that law in place. There's a lot of states that have it, but there's just a lot that just make it really hard on defending your home, which is just uh, it makes no sense. I was yeah, talking to my wife about that yesterday, and I'm like, I, like she was like, "Baby, you gotta learn the law." You know, I just got my you know I just got my license officially. Oh yeah, I passed my test by the way. Super easy. Yeah, good. Um, shout out to you so now I, I can legally get my get my protection for my house and um she was just saying like you gotta make sure you know you learn the law out here you're a black man this is now so I, I feel you you're right i do need to know, understand all of it but at the end of the day somebody come in my house and, 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 I, i'm gonna, I'm gonna do. ask for remorse later dog yeah uh, the law don't really matter in that situation i got to protect you me like you know what i'm saying i work too damn hard so yeah. i don't know um Keith is trolling in the chat. Stop. Don't even address him. My, my cousin Keith? Huh? My, my cousin Keith or another Keith? Yeah, yeah. Big titty Keith. Shout out to uh, Keith. That's family. So, I don't know, man. I, shout out to that guy, though, because I thought it was comical, and I'm, I was glad. And so, But we got a lot of squatters. This squatting thing's getting out of hand. I don't know if you saw the house in Beverly Hills. The cat literally lives – the cat next to LeBron's house. Yeah. Hey, is neighbors. being squatted in right now. It's being squatted in right now. And I'm I want to know. I want to see a map. I want to count the days before we don't even know where that motherfucker is. Because there is no way that you're gonna be up by these high dollar cats starting to do it, which they are. They're starting to do it now everywhere. You saw that video of that TikToker who went on later and started crying with his kid because they banned his TikTok and IG. Makes you think though. So you had this cat, this Venezuelan, I don't know what he was, that we everybody saw the video. He came out, was talking about, How we know it. the laws in California. We're going to go squat in all your houses, blah, blah, blah. I got a question for you, though. People don't people forget and, and seem to just let shit pass. Our government is trying to ban what? Social media. TikTok. Okay. If it's trying to ban TikTok because they're a supposedly Chinese organization, correct? Mm -hmm. Allegedly. Allegedly. Then how did Americans' government ban this cat from TikTok mm. so quickly? How's America going to just ban TikTok? Mm, I think America's involved in this a little bit more than you think. I'm just throwing that out there. Mm. I'm just throwing that out there. 
I'm just trying to say, because uh, mm. I think Hunter Biden has gotten paid by China. I, I think he has. I think there's some records on his laptop. But anyway, uh, that's a whole nother political issue. But I'm just trying to say, uh, I'm pretty sure we're in bed with most of these places. Uh, don't get it twisted. And uh, no condom too. Yeah, oh yeah. And I think that it's uh, it's funny when we when I hear these things that, that that these this kid just got banned on TikTok from our government. But I'm like, hmm. By the way, I've looked into the TikTok thing, and uh, Anthony Galani, you should look into it too. Because uh, TikTok is actually not a Chinese company. They're owned by a separate entity. You should dive into and see who really owns them and created them and who governs TikTok. You can actually mm. do a deep dive on it. Mm. And you might be shocked at who actually has created TikTok and who owns it. They say China, they throw those things out. China is a very, very big place. Just so we're clear. Like, I don't think we're not China. <laughs> I, 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 I love it. It's made in China. That's the easy, that's just the easy, like, China. Yeah, like, any product, any toys, any, like, any anything, just China. Chinese doing it. We blame China for everything. If you think about it, good, bad, and, and indifferent. Yeah, it's uh, it's very, do a deep dive on TikTok. I, I did it over the weekend, pretty shocking, because a buddy of mine told me, he's like, man, this shit ain't China. It ain't Chinese. It ain't just China. Go look at who actually created it and dived into it, and I'm like, really? And I saw the names on that thing, and I'm like, ain't no Chinese names on this. Mm. But anyway, um, shout out to Florida, Santa Rosa County Sheriff uh, for doing that. And then I posted the whole story to this whole fucking start of this re conversation, Smitty, was I posted a thing like, damn, maybe I should be going to Florida now. I saw that. And uh, that shit blew up. I hate Florida, FYI. <laughs> I can't stand you motherfuckers. So I just want to be clear. Your weather's horrific. Don't tell me about weather when you compare it to California. Your fucking weather is humid eight months out the year. It's unbearable. The other four months is a fucking hurricane that might wipe you off the fucking planet Earth. And then I got to deal with fucking shitty ass fucking weather fucking beaches that are only half occupied because the other half are shitty. I've been to Florida too many times. Miss me with all the fucking Florida talk. Listen. I love Florida. Love the women sometimes. Some here and there. Hold on. You say I hate Florida, and then you maybe went to I love Florida. <laughs> well, what I'm saying is I'm not moving there, Smitty. Like I and then and then people want to bring up it's no taxes and no this. Yeah. No, there is. There are property taxes. Stop. It's not just no tax. Texas and Florida have taxes. They're called property taxes, and they're higher than giraffe pussy. Stop. But taxes are still worse out here than Florida, though, overall. Yeah, but still, they 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 catch they get you back, dog. They get you back with the fucking, oh, there's no state tax. Well, guess what? Your property tax is the highest draft, pussy. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, and it catches you up. It, like, they're going to get their money some way, Smitty. Yeah. Nah, I feel you on that. Texas, there's no state tax in Texas, JB. Come on down. Well, your property taxes are double California, fuckface. So sh you're going to get it back some way. Stop. <laughs> Oh, uh, listen, right? shout out to Florida, Texas. I, I'll be honest right now, though. The way this California thing is, shit, I'd go to Florida and Texas in a heartbeat. I'm going uh, to Florida about, about a month and a half. Shit gets worse. Shit. A month and a half, I'll be in Florida. But don't compare. Please stop comparing shit. California may have fucked up shit going on right now, but so does every state. Stop. And let me be honest. Don't compare your state to our state and with weather. Please, just don't. Don't. Stop. You're making a narrative to just make me feel better to come to your state. I've been to every state. It's not. There's no comparison to California. Stop it. Please just shut the fuck up. Don't ever talk to me about weather here in California. Please. Florida is beautiful. Though. I love Florida all your beautiful. state. But don't miss me with the weather. Okay. Arizona's fucking 125 degrees eight months out the year. Fucking Texas is human, muggy, and shitty with hurricanes and just shitty weather everywhere, and it's mostly desolate. Oklahoma is an absolute fucking shithole, Joe. Shut the fuck up. And Kansas is even worse. And as you keep going up, you got a shithole Nebraska, a shithole Iowa. But shout out to Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas for all our farming and everything we do. But anyway, um, Michigan and Colorado right now are under fucking. Hold on, hold on. Quote of the day. They're under snow. It's fucking April. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
It's fucking April. You're in the snow. And you're going to give me a fucking weather update? Shut the fuck up. Uh, quote of the day. Brought to you by Bet Online. We did the video 20 minutes ago. Um, your opinion doesn't change reality. God damn. Why does it always segue is perfect? I don't get it. I don't get it. Maybe your because you. Your opinion doesn't change reality, Floridians. Maybe because you make the show. Your opinion of your weather doesn't change the reality. And it's really shitty. Um, let's get to uh, contrary to belief. Brought to you by Prize Picks. Head on over there. Contrary to belief, by the way, practice makes permanent. <laughs> Damn. Uh, contrary to belief. Yeah, 10,000 hours, you get real good at something, it becomes permanent. Practice makes permanent, not perfect. Mm. Um, poll question, Big Smitty. <laughs> Ah, shit. Here you go. Here he, He's back. Ladies and gentlemen, he is back. The infamous uh, that I taught him. When that gets thrown it's out merciless before the, the damn question, it's, merc- it's merciless, crazy. Monday. merciless Monday. Should women referee men's sports? Oh, my God. Full question. Shout out. Drop it in the chat. Should women referee men's sports, Big Smitty? Hold All right, on. let me Before jump in. Hold on now. Before you answer, though, before you uh, answer, I want you to see this. Bailey, drop it. Anthony draws the foul. I think Max Cruz just picked up a technical foul. That's Struce in the air with a pump fake, and he draws the foul. She teed him up for that. So, go ahead, Smitty. Defend her all you want. Go ahead. Not defending her on that play. That was horrible. I've seen men do that for seasons. The last five seasons, referees have been doing the Men, referees oh. have been getting emotional and calling some of the worst Good. technical fouls you have yeah, ever I'll witnessed in the history of basketball. The, the last five seasons, I've seen it with my own two oh. eyes. My oh. own two eyes. We choose to pick the women's play when they're doing it. To fit the narrative that JB wants to fit. Kudos to you for being a hell of a producer. But at the end of the day, to answer the question, should women be able to referee male sports? Yes. Not even an argument. We can argue about coaching. You got a hell of a point on the coaching side. And you might have won that argument. But on the referee side, come on, JB. That, that, that ain't got nothing to do with nothing. That's just fucking knowing the rules, being in shape. And running up and down that court and, and calling the game as is. Men have called crazy technical fouls from the beginning of time, but especially as of late. So do not point out the one time a woman did it. And, and again, I'm sure it's been more than more than one time, but don't use this one recent time where a woman has done it and ignore the countless thousands of times that we've all seen men make horrendous, horrendous emotional base calls. In the NBA, keep it keep it a hundred, y'all. And Brett, you're a simp. Say, everybody will be talking shit. Please, if you in California, I beg you, please walk up to me in the street because I'm not hard to find. I'm not. I ain't got no security. I'm out and about everywhere. I'm in the hood. I'm everywhere. I'm, I'm in the nice areas. Please, if you see me in in Inglewood, downtown, Century City, Culver City, Santa Monica. Anybody who talks shit in this chat, when you see me, please say that to my face. I am begging you. Don't come to me and say, oh, my God, Big Smitty, JB Show, take a picture. Fuck your picture. Come call me a simp and call me stupid and all that shit you saying, say it to my face. Please, I'm begging you, and you're going to see what's going to happen. I'm not even going to say what's going to happen. It's going to be a surprise to you. I know what's going to happen. It's going to be a huge surprise to you. What's that? Please come say it to me. And let my wife be next to me, too, just, just to add a little mustard to what I'm going to do to you. That is all. Continue, JB. Smitty passed the death. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Smitty <laughs> passed the death. I'm like, baby, hey, I, w- I walk around for the good. Hey. Smitty <laughs> passed the test. Smitty passed the test. He went all the smoke. <laughs> It looks like illegal now, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I be, Jay. It looks like illegal now. I passed a 15 question test, homie. <laughs> 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 
the fifth <laughs> round. He went all oh, the smoke. I was like, well, my sins. He went illegal. He went uh, squatters. He went all the motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, give me a reason to use that motherfucker. Yeah, he went chat members. He went members to chat Discord. <laughs> God damn. See Big Smitty in the hoods. Give him a hug. Let him know you just fuck with him. All right. The women thing. Oh, shit. Back to reality. Back to reality. Back, Back to reality. reality. Back. Uh, uh. That's classic, by the way. You don't know that song. Uh, women should not referee men's sports. There's a major reason why, and it comes down to a fear factor. Not just that I'm going to fear you, not that men fear men or nothing, but there's a factor that needs to be instilled in the player that I'm not going to take this, this game. I'm not going to do this, this game. I'm not going to allow this, this game. What that ends up being is a fight between two teams of men. And what we've seen far too often is the women getting out the way. She's gone. You're minus one enforcer now. Enforcers are what we hire to regulate laws in this country. We regulate laws by having enforcers, people that can instill fear into another man. And no offense to women, but women aren't enforcers. They're not instilling fear into another man. And you can agree to disagree and all that old shit about having women. They're, all they have to do is be in shape and know the rules and all this. Well, there's a problem to that, and that's a nut check heart problem. There's no heart transplants allowed or given to these enforcers that we so-called call them. They're not enforcers. They're going to get out of there in a fight. They're going to get the fuck gone in the streets in a fight as well. And I think women should referee women's sports. I think men should referee men's sports. It's not a knock or a sexist take. It's a fact of enforcing something that needs to be enforced. I need to let you know that you're not controlling this narrative, player. This is refereed by for a reason. You're, we need to enforce the rules. Women can't do that with men. Sorry. Name me a sport or a real-world act that women enforce the rules upon men. Don't tell me a female AD or a female principal in elementary school either, okay? Because the parents should be the enforcers. The principals should be just living through the rules. I don't want to hear about a female football referee. I just don't. It goes along with the coach. I mean, it's the same thing, dog. It's really like, I don't know. I think it's a narrative that they want to push. They just want a woman out there just to say they have a woman. They hired a woman. It's equitable. It's equity. It's not, Smitty. Like, let's just keep it real. Stop being so nice, Smitty. You don't have to be nice when you're telling the truth. The truth of the matter is females don't belong in men's sports. Because if you if you and I both agree that biological males should not compete versus females, correct? Of course. Not in the conversation. Okay. So what's the difference? <laughs> so they're not competing. That's yeah, the there difference. Is, there is exactly they're not the competing. Just hear that and go, oh, it's not, it's totally different. No, it's not. Yes, it, it li- yeah. no, no, Jamie, it literally oh, yeah. is. It it's literally really is. different, dog. Just telling you, women can't control anything out there on the court with men. If there's a fight that breaks out, helmets are swinging. What is the female supposed to do? What is she going to do? The, the men go don't do it. You, what do you, you want her to do? The brawl, the mount, the mount, the palace. But what do you want the female to do? Sir, I'm just asking a serious question. What do you want the female to do in a football Can't game? None of them do anything. Fight Security's out, on the court. Game, helmets are swinging. What do you want her to do? No, let me be real. This is real life, Smitty. This ain't no. What are the refs? What, what are the men refs doing, JB? Football fights have had. Have you seen with helmets and shit swinging? Please keep it one hundred, homie. Let's keep it real here. What is the female gonna do in a fucking NFL football game when helmets get to swinging and men are fucking fighting? Tell me. They're not gonna participate in it, but oh, first of all, you're, you're equal, homie. First of all, how many how many fights are literally happening in games? Fights. We're not talking about little motherfuckers. We're talking about literal fights. It's very, it's, it's 
is not a lot, JB, in a game. What do you and mean? Pra- pra- fights happen at practice morning games. You know that. You know that. In camp, at the actual games, it's very rare that you're seeing big time Andre Johnson, uh, 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 who was it? Finnegan, Courtland Finnegan, you ain't seeing that on the field. It's very, very rare, number one. Number two, it's not all women reps. It's a handful of women reps on the field with men. Number two. Number three, even the male reps ain't fucking separating fights like that. They, they, they bring on coaches. It's a whole, when it's a big-time fight, everybody trying to get on the field. The question, he makes everybody. You haven't answered the question yet. You, you and Matt do the same shit. You you avoid the question that's asked to make a whole spill about I answered the, I answered the, answer question, the question. You said, first. what would they do? I said they wouldn't participate. Answer the that was question my answer. first, then give me your spill. Answer the question. I what, did. What, I said they wouldn't participate. You didn't listen. You're not listening. That's the problem. I talked to you. Hear what you want to hear. I said, I said off the beginning. They would uh, not participate. You responded and said, they're, "No, they're all equal." I already answered the question. So wait, you said their your answer is they would not participate in the fight. Yes, that's what I said. That, that was my response. Let me ask you this: So when men and when men coming in the tunnel or out the tunnel, and there are issues in the tunnel, let's just say one tunnel for college football stakes. Yeah. We have a major issue in there, and there's women in there because she's part of that's her job. She's supposed to walk out one team. There's a, there's a guy over here who's supposed to walk out the other team, so there's no issue. That's how it's been forever. That's how it is right now. You know how many women I have seen where there's gets to yapping in the tunnel and there's about to be a scrap that we saw Michigan and Michigan State just last year? I don't know where you keep saying there's no fights anymore because there's a fucking that. college that fights every day in football. I don't know what you're talking about. But anyway, where have you seen the women go? So now we're la- we're low, we're short, one or two female or two refs, not even female, two refs because the female couldn't control the narrative in the fucking tunnel. But it's okay to have them, though, still. Let's keep having females. For what? JB, all right, give me, listen. D. Jones, ha- have, have that, have that. Okay, women female. can't stop a fight. Have, have, no, for real, ha- have that. Cool. Point, point goes to JB. He scores a point. First point, JB, boom. What else? No, no, what up? Because I love how motherfucker will use, they'll find the one little hole, the one little thing, so they can try to feel like they won an argument. 99% of an actual refereeing job has nothing to do with bringing up a fight. It's regulation of a game. Make sure they follow the rules, calling the game straight. Point blank, period. It's not about fighting. It. Motherfuckers ain't fighting all the time on the field like that. That's not a huge part of their job. It's a very minute part of their job that does not happen every single game. You know that. So at the end of the day, if I pass the test to become a referee, I understand the game, I know the rules, and I can call the game just like a man can call it. Come on now. You have a way better argument with your coaching. I'm, you have a way better argument on that. With the referee shit, you can miss it with this. You, you about, have zero, no, zero has, argument. There's nothing you can uh, say that can keep a woman out from refereeing. I, I, I don't game. even say, wait, the, the coaching argument is because it's a no-brainer. And if you agree that women should coach in the NFL, then you know damn well you'd be torn apart on social media and everywhere else like Matt was. So you you took the slight. The the reason you're going on this thing is because you think that this is something you can win at on social media and you you won't get torn apart. I'll be torn apart. No, I won't. Because women shouldn't referee men's sports. Just shouldn't. They shouldn't give me another reason then outside the fight. Give me give me another one. They should referee any men's sport. Period. Give me another reason. Huh? Give me outside of not bringing up a fight. Give me another right, reason. I, I, I gave a whole rant about it. I said there's no fear factor in the men from doing things that are going to escalate. Well, fear factor is them making a the damn call and getting you talking about. It's a fear factor. You do realize there's enforcers in to do what? To not allow things to get out and escalate, right? A female's not allowing that. A female's going to get an escalation. She's not going to prevent an escalation just by being out there on the court, Smitty. Like, come on, man. You, you really think that you're going to fucking really pay a woman the same respect as a man in a men's sport? You're really going to sit there and be like, well, she knows that I can fucking, you know, do a Euro step, fucking bang on somebody, and she's okay. She's going to call travel? No, she don't understand. A man can do that. You may not, women, lady, but I can. I can actually do that. I'm a man. I can jump through the fucking... You're really going to let a woman... Tell you what you can and can't do in your specific sport. You think it's equal that she knows how to do it? Just because she's in shape and knows the rules? <laughs> Hold on, man. Now you all over the place. Oh, shit. Women play the same sport. We're talking about, you right now, the example we use was basketball, too. So that's even worse. Exactly. 
Exactly. I the said sport, did, they, did, they, did, they, did they both play? No, the poll question's men's sports. Yeah, bro. The example that you showed that yeah. came to your mind was fucking basketball. Yeah. So yeah. the sport that women also play. Yeah, no shit. They still they they, they can't call that. I said the, the don't change the narrative, Smitty. I asked should women referee men's sports. And I and I and I said yes, period. Right. It's fucking we, showed a picture, we showed a video of a basketball game. That's still a men's sport that she was refing, right? Yeah. So it, don't don't move into a sport that they play. I already said I think they can coach because they play the sport. That don't make sense though. So how does it not make sense? Up? I can coach. I can coach, but I can't the sport because I play it, but I can't I can't ref it because like I don't, yeah, I, I don't know, difference. bro. It's all over the place. There's a difference. What's the difference? I don't understand how you don't uh, understand the difference in refereeing a man's sport. I, I really don't get it. Like, you really think a woman can control the narrative of a man's sport? Yes. I, I'm all right. Well, that's crazy. But all right, I've never. I'm gonna be real with you, JB. Maybe we're different. I never went on the field. And was like. We're, oh gonna gosh. Gosh. We, we're never gonna agree though. We I got mean, we got JB as the ref today. I'm shivering in my boots. Fuck the ref. Go out there and play ball. Yeah. I never in my life, swear to God, right? I don't know. God is the, my witness. Yeah. I never went on the field or the basketball court and was like, oh my gosh, Johnny's a referee today. I'm intimidated. No, I'm about to go play ball. Not, and if they I'm make not, a call, not, I'm gonna be like, oh, right, you know why you never said it, Smitty? You wow. know why you never smet it? Because wow. there's all men out there. That's why you never said it. <laughs> Thanks for proving my point, homie. Anyway, let's move on. Fuck, you got to be kidding me. You got to be God. kidding me. Can't believe this shit here. Hey, you, let's dive into. I got. Well, I don't, don't want to die. I don't want to die. Matt gets on here. I want to die. I want to start fights today. Fuck it. I'm merciless. I, fight fight. All day. I feel like fighting, too. I slept good. I want to fight everybody. Fuck it. Uh, I'm gonna lose too. All right, let's do it before you before Matt let's gets fight in. Let's fight again with Matt. Let's do it. Dion goes on Gilly's podcast. I don't well, whoever Gilly is. Gilly mm. looks like an absolute fucking idiot. That was the Gilly the King, man. He's a he's That's a former right a rapper, yeah. rapper turn. He has one of the biggest podcasts out right now. Shout out to him and Wallow. Is that him right there? That's Gilly and his cousin is Wallow. Yes. Uh, I don't know who any of them are. But anyway. Um, well, that's why I'm here to say, explain the culture to you as the black yeah, man on the show. One of the biggest podcasts out. Yes, it is. Yeah, he's not a culture. He looks like a fucking idiot. Back uh, by Barstool. Uh, Shout out to Philly. Dude isn't the culture, homie. <laughs> I, 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 I'm from Compton. I know the culture, motherfucker. He ain't a culture to me. Compton ain't the only area where the culture is at, uh, JB. No I'm just, I'm just you know, I ain't say culture? Gilly was the culture. So he's why a part he the of culture? the culture is what I'm saying. He's why a Philly, he the Philly legend. He got he got a whole rap in that the biggest podcast out. The you miss me with that. NWA is the culture, homie. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. This motherfucker's nobody. So let's talk about Deion Sanders on his podcast saying that Travis Hunter will be picking his NFL team. Oh, you take it, Smith. I want you to have this one. Can we play it first? Can we play it first? Predict. Shador and Travis going in the draft. Top four. Ooh, that's pretty beautiful. Anywhere from one through four. One of them is going to be one. Mm. That's what I'm talking about. One of them is going to be speak it into existence. And the, the, the latter one would not go behind four. Mm. Now, all this is subjective because I know where I want kind of want them to go. Mm -hmm. And let's not forget Shallow, okay? Mm -hmm. But I know I want them to go. So there's certain cities that ain't, ain't gonna happen. Gonna okay, you on point. It's gonna be, a, it's not a, I'm sorry, it's gonna be an Eli. Now listen, I know you said we're supposed to argue on here. I don't know what you're gonna say. You always say something a little over the top that makes me argue with you, even if we agree on the overall point. Because what I'm gonna say is, I think Coach Prime is tripping on laying a foundation and saying that it's going to be an Eli situation. First of all, get first, first of all, y'all got to play another season, number one. Number two, let's see if they will even get drafted. I think they will, but let's see if, see if they even get drafted. Let's, let's, let's not make assumptions. And then number three, if in the event that you are blessed with the opportunity to get drafted, you have to be thankful for whatever team gave you that opportunity. You're not, you can't walk around like your shit don't stink. When I got a, a scholarship from Ball State, yeah, you, you're thinking like, oh, I, think I, I should be able to play Big Ten or I think I could play, you know, ACC. I'm better than you. But in the day, like, nah, this team, this school believed in me. 
and taking care of my my schooling and allowing my dreams to continue. Thank you. So if a team drafts you that you don't like the city in, so be it. The NFL is an opportunity for you. It's not no, this ain't no damn like, oh, I picked my team. No, they don't have, the NFL has lived a long time without you and will live a long time after you. And it's not even a, a direct, just a, a Shador. And this is for any player. The, the, no one's bigger than the Shield. No one has never have been. So this whole narrative of like, I'm going to pick my city and all that, I just don't like that anyway. Even with Caleb Williams. You know, we went at him when his dad was coming out saying he won't ownership in the team. And then there were rumors early on in the year about him not going to Chicago. So we got to be consistent. Even though I love Coach Prime, I've, I've, say, I've supported him. I have to be consistent consistent on this show. I can't bash Caleb Williams and his father. And then on the other end, but, oh, it's okay if Deion says it. No, he is wrong. Let them finish this, this year out of this season. Let's pray to God they get drafted. Let's pray that it is first round. I, I hope it is. And whatever team drafts them, be thankful. And go ball out on your rookie contract. And if you don't like your city after your rookie contract, then talk about moving around. But let's stop acting like we control everything. So that's my initial take. I don't want to hold up all, all, all the time. Um, hold on real quick. Uh, this is a deep one. It really is. I enjoy silence during the show. Back in the days, I used to be like nervous with, with silence, whether it's conversations, whether it's moments within the media or podcast, but I've learned that there's power in silence. There's, a, there's anticipation in silence. All right, so look. I started the show off with a little bit of a make it make sense rant. And my my thing was I, I used the word force. I said we no longer as adults force, and I use the word force, our children to be children anymore. We don't do it. See, back in the day, you and I both, you're still a product or a victim of it. Um, it's not a victim, but it's a you understand me, yeah. You got a shitty vehicle as a kid or in college, or you earned it or bought it or whatever. You still yeah. drive the fucking thing, you told me. My I first and only car. Yeah, only car. I had the same thing. I had a shitty, I had a Dodge pickup when I was young. Then I had a fucking beat up Mustang. Then I had a shitty blazer that I crashed. My homeboy flew out the window. Then I had a just shitty car after shitty car after shitty car. And I had to earn those those rights. We got kids nowadays, like, you know, getting Hellcats. And I, I, they, they never had to go through, like, my dad, even if he had it, wasn't allowing me to have it mm. and he made me go through i don't think people understand what i just said like even if my dad had it he didn't let me have it because he wanted me to earn it learn the value of a dollar like i'm gonna be real with you dog and i see it every day smitty these young cats getting their first whip as a hellcat or whatever rolls whatever it may be i've seen them literally sit on the motherfucking hood i've seen motherfuckers slide across it doing a video to make content and i'm sitting there like homie i wish you would lay up on my hood there's these broads on tiktok jumping on top of fucking lamborghinis hundreds of thousands in damages just to make a tiktok video no respect whatsoever for anyone else's property and I agree, and I believe if you don't force your children to be children and allow them to be adults while they have no fucking idea what adulthood is, we're setting them up for failure. We are setting the society up for failure. It is becoming a bad, bad space for the youth. And it's adults in the room that are doing it. And I'm very shocked, actually, at this whole Deion Sanders take um, for the simple fact that he came from the mud yeah, and he earned his shit through being a God gifted athlete. God touched him in a way where he's different, right? Let's just be yeah. honest. There's a few one percenters in the world that God touched and they're different. His son's not different dog. I'm going to be honest. I can't, I, I don't know how else to tell you. His son's not different. His daddy blood is thicker than water is going to push the narrative that he is my son and he's an, and he's different when he knows and his deep in his heart he knows his son's not and 
I think he's going to push that shit on the NFL because of who he is. But we're not forcing him to be kid. Like, you think Shador's first car was a B210 fucking Volvo fucking Prius? That's not a knock. You got it. You got it. I, I hear you. I, I feel you. I'm just telling you what I would do, what my dad would do. Other people that I know that had money would do. Um, nowadays, it's just they don't even realize where they're. They don't realize where their culture or their heritage or their lineage came from. These kids miss generations because we didn't teach them that we fucking struggled. We came up this way. We were fucked up. These kids, because our parents, as parents, we don't want our kids to struggle like we did. Right. We say that all the time. Doesn't mean you don't have to teach them how we struggled and where we came from. Just because we don't, we're not going to let them struggle, dog. We got the money. We have it. It's in our, it's a safe haven. We have it now. Right. It doesn't mean you have to just give it to them without teaching them the value of what it means to earn it. And I'm just telling you, like, I don't understand the fact that we haven't taught these cats the value of what it is because I think they'll have a better, longer career if they knew what it took to earn that that scholarship if it if it was to earn that first rookie contract i gotta grind these cats are getting so much generational wealth as a youngster that there's no way in the world and i and it's it's I, this is me talking you talking i've had times where i've got a big bag of money and i'm like oh fuck i'm gonna chill for a week or two like it's not it's common nature to 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 lax to be la- relaxed now I, I got this money i'm not gonna grind as hard as i was when i didn't have it it's just pure nature. I, I, it's human nature. I don't. You can't sit here and tell me there's very selective few guys like Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, that actually made it and still grinded the same way, hundred times a day, twenty four seven, three sixty five. There's only a few of those though. Yeah. These guys now, dog, ain't doing this. They're not doing that shit, man. They're getting this big time money, and then you see all the injuries, the lack of the body. The, the, the look of the body that I talk about all the time. I don't believe they're invested anymore in their profession, their body, the same that it once was because the money is so abnormous. And I, listen, you and I can both say two things can be true and all that old shit. Then we got to start teaching some sort of value system because if we don't, it's going to be a short-lived Get rid of Justin Fields for a Chico stick and a string cheese. Get rid of Mac Jones for shit just two years later. Get rid of fucking these quarterbacks, you know, pick it. We, these guys were first rounders that we gave up assets on just a couple years ago. Right. And now we're throwing them away for nothing. What are we teaching these cats? Like if they were taught something earlier in life, maybe in college and by their coaches, who I blame, and their parents or whoever, maybe they would understand something else and be a little bit better, harder to cut, harder to get rid of. I just think you're going to keep seeing this recyclable thing going on and on and on. And I just believe we're just we're just recycling. And these and I've been saying it for years. These kids are a piece of meat in a meat market and they need to understand that's what they are. And I'm not mad that they're getting paid. That's not my thing at all. I'm not mad they're getting money. I'm mad about the, the fact about how we go about giving them the money and how we are teaching them that they are worth the money. Now, they're not worth the money yet, but based on the marketplace, we argue this all the time. They've earned the money. It's crazy. I don't believe they're worth it, though, but we're giving them whatever they, they want. And it's just to me, it's created a horrible, horrible thing, not only in society, but in sports and him saying this is my point is just allowing this the next generation to believe that they should automatically get what they have yet to earn. And that is what he's doing right now with his own kids, Travis Hunter. And that's what disappoints me and a guy that knows coming from the mud what it was like and how hard it was, especially then, the 80s. Uh, Jerry Curl, gold chain coming out, white folks looking at him like he's crazy. And I'm supposed to get a first, you know, I want to be the guy in the NFL, the white man owned market. He knows this too. He knows the inner workings of it. He knows Jerry Jones and him are boys. He has ownership ties. He knows these people and he knows it. And he's putting that out there now to make it very hard on certain teams to actually p- pick them. And I think he's putting that narrative out there now. 
So when it comes down to nut crunching time and draft day, that's maybe somebody will pass his son by. That's a shitty organization so that he falls into line into a good organization. I just think it's setting a horrible precedent. And furthermore, I talked to Matt about like, there are no humility anymore. Like mm. Colorado was fucking God awful last year. Like I, I'm trying to figure out where do you have the audacity to just start demanding shit as if you guys are two time national champs. You guys haven't earned nothing. You haven't earned shit. And, and the target is only bigger on your back. Now you move to conferences. Now you're in another conference. You, we can argue maybe shittier than the PAC 12 was last year, at least. Overall, be a better conference now. Obviously, you took a lot of our Pac-12 guys. But there's no humility anymore. Like, you don't think that this kid actually believes everything his daddy is telling him? Yeah, he does. And I, I, I'm shocked that this grown man said that. I really am. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, he, he's sticking to his guns. This is what he's done. And I actually have been the guy that said, listen, he's actually setting himself up for failure for the media to attack him even at a larger scale when he doesn't do well. Right. Um, and that's why I hate that he does it. Cause I like Dion. I just hate that he does this. Cause he puts a target on his back to where like, you have to do it, Dion, like you have to do it. Or you just, <laughs> you're, you're going to be, Killed. The thing about that though, I kind of feel like he he enjoys having a target on his back because he's so he's so confident that he really believes that I don't I, I'm gonna do this. And if you do, it, do it, great. Hey, I do it. I'm not mad at him that he does it. That's why I said I I've been on this show many times and said he sticks by it. Fuck it. But you got to end up doing it though. Yeah. yeah. Like, or if you don't do it though, just telling you. Hey, hey. he might know something we don't know, JB. He I just might. wish he would be. Because let's be real, everybody transitions that was a player that turned into a coach. You turn into coach, though. He has yet to turn into coach. And that's the problem I have. Like, you're not prime no more, dog. You're not prime. You're not a kid, 21-year-old cat coming out of college no more with flamboyant, rapping with, with, with the MC Hammer and chill. You're a coach and leader of men now. There's there needs to be Coach Sander effect. Coach Sanders needs to be pushed in this thing now. But that's my opinion. Listen, you all could disagree, whatever. The bottom line is Coach Prime is being pushed to Colorado, not the Colorado Buffaloes, not Coach Sanders. Um, he's a coach. He's he's earned that name like a doctor's earned his name. Like you're a coach. You're a coach for life. That's what you do. If you're going to be a coach, you're going to be a coach. The the word the prime term to me. If I'm a father and, and, and Deion Sanders is recruiting my son, I'm not letting him go there. And I'm not letting him go there for, for, for one major reason. You are living off your name prime, and you have yet to transition into coach. And until you become a coach, I can't let you coach my son with the word prime used in front of your name. I need a coach to coach my son, not a flamboyant ex-Hall of Fame player who thinks he's a coach. I don't need that guy. I want a coach, dog, a guy that's fully in on this thing. And the word prime has to go. And I, it might sound minute. It might sound uh, elementary. It might sound, am, it, it might sound, uh, you know, nitpicky. But that's me as a guy that understands the business. Um, I'd be damned if my kid were to go to a university and call a coach by his name prime or some acronym or some name i'm calling you coach because that's who chose i chose my son to go play for i don't need this <clears throat> bar stool uh shit show being filmed every day all that shit i need a coach to coach my kid that's the only reason i wouldn't let him go play for him i like Dion. i like yeah, I like I gotta prime disagree with that Deion point. Sanders. I like the prime time Deion Sanders as a player. Of course, I know, I loved him to death. I fuck. I I and I still I still actually like what he's doing now. Uh, for a lot of things that he says, a lot of the things he says I agree with. But there's certain things that he says I just don't agree with that are just like they're not just like teeter totter either. Like Smitty and I may be disagreeing on just a little bit of th the things I disagree with him are are just spectrums away. Like 
uh, I'm on this side of the world. He's on that side of the world on the things we disagree with. But people do that to me all the time. So it's not a, not a knock on him. I really don't care. He don't care what I think. I don't care what he thinks. I don't care what none of you think. You don't care what I think. That's how the world goes. So let it be. Let it be. Let the fucking ball bounce where it may bounce and land where it lands. Because that's what it's going to come down to at the end of the day anyway. And all we're going to say is here, I told you so, Smitty. Or you're going to say, I got receipts. That didn't age well, as you Twitter guru fucks say. So it's only going to go two ways, one or two ways. And that's just my take. I just didn't like, I don't like that. Because we're enabling our kids and we're not forcing them to be children. We're telling them they're adults when they're 17, 18, 19. Because of the car they drive, the money they got. And... Etc. I just don't agree with it. No, I, I I hear you on that, man. Like I said, I didn't. I don't agree with the primes take, but I understand. I understand what you're saying, and you've been on that from the beginning. You've been consistent, so I'm excited to hear what Big Matt is going to say. But I know we got a quick commercial break to go take a quick pee, get some water, get some coffee, some tea, go walk ash real quick. But when we come back, I know Big Matt's going to join us, and we're going to dive more into this Dion thing amongst other topics, JB. By the way, 67% say no women should not ref sports. We're going to bring that back up, too, with Matt, too. Get ready to argue. We'll be back in five. The University of Colorado, your near and dear alum, had their first team meeting. Had their first team meeting yesterday. They had their first team meeting, Matt. We're trying to be calm. They had their first team meeting yesterday. And... The two spear face, spearheads and face figure face of the show program, Fedor Sanders and Shiloh were in Paris doing a runway walk. Do you think this is conducive to successful behavior in winning a Big 12 title in going to a bowl game? I just want to know what you thought of the construction worker, Shadur Sanders, and the camel wearing baby oil, Shiloh. Please give us your thoughts. Um, um, I, uh, boy, I'll put it like this. <clears throat> I definitely see why people hate Colorado so much. I mean, I, I, uh, you're going to miss the first team meeting when we get back for fa- a fashion show and runways in Paris, bro. I, I know that everybody at Colorado is going to get super pissed off at me for saying this, but I, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not, a, I'm not. A, <laughs> I gotta help you. I gotta dive no. in and say. You homie, you don't know what to do here, bro. Like I, I gotta save you, dude. Hey, man, I, I, I gotta awesome. save you. I gave you, you the know, full picture. Maybe you should cut this for Matt, dude. No, oh, geez, shit. thanks for setting me up like this, you asshole, and making me. This is I, a I, I in here, dog. I don't, I don't do the whole fashion thing. Number one, I just, it, it's not important to me, and I. Team meetings are important, and I uh, I don't know the answer to this question. Anything I say is wrong. Everybody's going to get angry at me for having an opinion. If I don't agree with them that they should go do their fashionista stuff, then I'm a piece of shit. And if I do agree with it, then I'm a fashion icon or something. I don't know. Man. I don't. I don't know what's happening. I don't understand the question. Can I plead the fifth? Can I plead the one, two, three, four, five? Yeah, Can I please? Yeah. Please? Yeah. Please? please. Let's say the fashion icon. One, two, three, four, five. Dog, like, I'm not a fashion icon. I'm not a fashion <laughs> icon. I don't, know what, I don't icon. know what to say. I don't know what to do. I'm super confused. I don't appreciate the question and how you set me up like this. Oh. And I, I, I mean, they looked good in their hunting gear, I guess, but I don't understand, man. What are we doing? Uh, I mean, I'm wrong. Everybody's just going to get super pissed off of me now because of you. And you asked me this question knowing that it would just make me be super at, like, I, Schmitty, man, what, what am I supposed to do here? What the fuck, uh, man? What am uh, I supposed to do, man? What am I supposed to do here, man? This isn't cool, man. <laughs> 
talk about being between a rock and a hard place. God, I know shit, dude. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? You hear you Nat's voice? Of all people, dude, right. you're, asking me? you're asking me of all people, what do I think about the fashion show? Oh, I, I, think, oh, I think it's. I think it's. Can we get this cut for vertical I don't clip? Know how to say this any other way that we probably shouldn't be missing team meetings to <sighs> be in a fashion show. If we don't want to give everyone else ammunition to use against us. And then, like, look, I'm not hating. I'm not a piece of shit. I I don't dislike Shiloh or Shador or Coach Prime. I don't dislike Paris. Fashion's cool. (laughs) Pharrell is awesome. I don't dislike the the fucking – who was he hanging out with? Off take or take off or that guy (laughs) – wasn't he hanging out with him, too, at a club? And then they were talking to him. Yeah, there he is. It was Quavo. Quavo? Yeah, and he, he said, he's okay. Up and you too much motion, and they couldn't handle them. But blah, blah, blah. And so, like, is everybody going to get mad at me? I didn't say that. I didn't say it. I wasn't at the fashion show. I don't know. I'm just trying to wrap my fucking stupid white brain around this, and I can't do it. I don't know what to do. Your I'm brain's so white. I thought it was pink. I'm hey, so what confused. did Takeoff say about him? No, it's just, hold on. First of all, hold on, hold on. that's Quavo. RP to take off. That's Quavo. RP to take off. That's Quavo. Yeah. R.I.P. to take off. I don't even know the name. I love when two old whites talk about these fucking names because I don't know any other name. Take off Quavo. Fuck. I love when two old whites talk about it. That's why I had to jump in because I know I know y'all meant well. I was like, let me make sure we we ain't we, 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 we're respecting out. the dead because you know he had just died too. So I was like, let me jump in real quick. I know what y'all meant. I just want to jump in. So I don't know who you're calling old. I'm in my fucking prime. You are you're actually young. I fucking am the one that's fucked. Yeah. Is Matt is Matt in his forties or is he just late thirties? He 40. just started I'm his forties. Matt just started his forties, Smitty. you he's got I'm you by good. ten, ten and some change. I almost got Matt by ten and some change. I got him by I got him by eight and two y'all change. both in y'all forties though, so y'all kind of in the same like room. 30. 30's a new twenty. Twenties the new teens. I, I love when they say that, but it's like, no, it's not. My dick don't tell me that. Well, well your fault you, you smoke look, and drink too much. And I, you know, thank right. you. Thank you. If you didn't smoke and drink oh, like a fucking fish, God. your dick would probably work really good. I don't drink. I think my dick works, I think. JB, I alcohol think. and smoke. JB, alcohol and smoke is bad for your heart. And once your heart <laughs> isn't performing at a high level, it fucks up the blood flow that leads to your your penile region. Okay, and when we your need penis isn't getting blood flow, you're not getting hard. Now you got to take pills. That? The pills ain't good for you. It's a trigger down effect. I, I don't take pills. Sleep. My dick looks hard. Hey, fine. Hey, uh, hey. Can we get you a blue chew commercial? Yeah, we're going to have to Please get God. I had him for a minute. I had him for a minute. Jesus, make this happen. <laughs> back. We, need, we need that, actually. I, look, first of all, my shit gets hard as a rock. Fine. No issues. We're talking about though. this this morning. <laughs> yeah, I really don't care hey. about your shit. Hey, he's will tell you. Um, Tell my grandpa who lived till he was 95 and smoked and drank every day of his life. And then and then tell the guy that my, grew up with my dad that used to run three miles every 6 a.m. and then just fell out and died at the lake running his three miles and had the perfect heart. Tell him that. You're right. That, that every is, day, you're not in control of this thing it's called what life. It is, Smitty. Guess whether what? Whether you believe in God or don't or whatever you believe in. That's what. We're going to die. We're going to die. 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 But JB, hold on. But using that, but real quick, I hear what you're saying. But using that mentality, you're basically telling the world to do or do the fuck you want to do. Go yeah. rob, go rob that, go rob that woman. Uh, 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 go, go fucking eat whatever, go drink whatever, go smoke whatever, go shoot whatever. You can't, nah. You you gotta have some, some you gotta have some discipline now, JB. Do a mat take time out. Fucking time. Who said rob a woman? Who the fuck that come in at? Saying, you're giving you're giving the green light to these young fucks to do stupid shit. No, what I'm didn't saying that dumb shit. When you saying uh, we gonna die anyway, fuck it, then that means to do whatever. I'm glad I'm glad Bailey showed that commercial because we uh, we got some prime Dion Sanders. I call it Coach Sanders Colorado take, but I gotta get Matt's take on something first. Prime. First of all, get ready to argue. Matt, three things we're gonna talk about Matt today. Colorado will be the last yeah, thing. Um, but I want to ask you, Matt. First of all, a question I have for you because it's very interesting take that probably could be a whole show, and I, cool. I wanted to bring this up because you have some very intellectual takes on certain things outside of the world of, of actually the gridiron. Here's a take I have though, that I had a fucking fight with yesterday on with a buddy. 
should the admissions requirements of a I'm not even, I don't, I want to say student of an athlete be the same or less than a general population student? Because here's the issue that people don't want to break down. And Matt talks about unionizing a lot and doing other things. And I know we've I've heard many people talk about suing and creating a, you know, being an employee and all this old shit. Here's my take, though. Then why is the football player being recruited by the four year? have a harder and more stringent fucking approach to getting into a university academically. Why is it that the the JUCO player is required to have a 2.5 GPA when the general populated student only needs a 2.0? Why is it, but yet we're going to go in and demand that these players have to do X, Y, and Z, and, ha- and, 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 and then we bitch and moan when that they get paid? I'm trying to figure out why they have a harder way to get into being an academic student when they're a football player than than a fucking math major coming out of some fucking shithole high school can get right in with no issues. Yet we want to bitch and moan that football players, football facilities, football money isn't building your facilities on your campus, such as computer labs and libraries that we know football pays for through BCS playoff and bowl bid money. So I'm trying to figure out, it's a deep conversation to have, but I had a fight yesterday and I'm like, no, then make the kids GPA requirements lower. We're going to, we're keeping out a whole demographic FYI. I think we realize what demographic that is when we're making GPA requirements harder than the regular general populated student. And I just think it's shit. All right. So look, I'm glad I'm glad you brought this up. Um college football is a business now. So, so take college, student out. We need to take student out. Yes, thank you. I don't I don't no offense to the academ- academic part of college, no offense to the professors. We we need, everybody, a, we need a, everybody who's there to learn. We but need I didn't go to fucking see you to learn. I went to see you to pass rush. I went to see you to play football. Period. I wouldn't have even sniffed college, not a shot in hell, if I didn't play football. And I wouldn't have stayed in college if I didn't play football either, because I was a terrible student and I didn't give a shit. Um, and I didn't give a shit because I didn't see the point in going to like elective classes when I'm on scholarship. I'm not paying for it. Why do I have to do this? So I, there. This is a this is a big question. But I look, school's always going to be there. I went back and got my degree after I got done playing. Football's not always going to be there, and I I think that the fact that they're still like making kids go to class and all that, I think it's laughable. It's fucking laughable. Like I, you should go to if you want to go to college and play football, and you're on scholarship. They should pay you the scholarship money and you should pay for your classes and then see what it's like to pay for your classes. And then I bet you, you go to them if it's coming out of your fucking pocket. If you want to go to college and you want to keep the money and you don't want to be a student, well, you're an employee to play football there. That's fine. Who gives a fuck? Like you just give them the money and they don't need to take classes and they don't go to school. But if you're, if you want to go to class, here's your money to go to class. If you don't want to go to class, there's your money, make a choice. And I'm sorry, but a lot of people are going to be like, oh, well, these kids can't make those kind of choices. But those are the same people that are saying they can make choices about NIL. Mm-hmm. So they're, they're, when you're 18, you're an adult and you need to act like one. And if you don't have any good counsel or anything, that's the NCAA's fault for not allowing agents, again, unionize. Um, I think that there's a lot of problems with the with the whole, with everything that's going on right now. And a lot of like, let's just try this without really contemplating the... Uh, you know what was going to come out of it. So I, I think that the whole GPA requirement thing and the whole it, again, it's it's all played out old school NCAA bullshit, bro. If you graduate from high school, you should any college should be able to get you in, especially if you're a player. Because no, no offense to the regular students, again, God forbid I offend somebody, but pe- people that can play football, basketball, baseball hockey, water polo, wrestle, whatever it is, if you're a four or five student and you're a fucking brain and you get an academic scholarship to the university, you are worth more. 
So if you're worth more and they think they can make money off of you, why should you have to pay? Why, or why should you have to go to school if you don't want to? Like, I'm, I'm sorry, but the whole student athlete part of this is dead, dog. These kids, 90% of these kids are taking online classes anyway. Then I, here's my thing. I, this is why I defend the coach, though, um, more than you guys do. Uh, that I get on the coach's side more. Um, not that you don't on occasion, but I'm just saying I, I'm always going to be on the coach's side because they get they're the ones that get fired. Um, they're the ones that also we they take a lot of heat for leaving one program to another, and then we say kids should be able to do the same thing and blah blah blah. Uh, here's the reason why I defend the coach, though. To your point. Uh, Kids come in on a scholarship. When you and I played, Matt, there was a 10 semester rule, meaning five years. You were on scholarship for five years, 10 semesters, meaning you could not be cut. They had to honor that scholarship unless you left back then. That's why we were allowed to go to the league and come back and play as long as we didn't eat up those 10 semesters and graduate. I mean, I'm sorry. We were allowed to come back five years later and get our degree still paid for on the original five year, 10 semester legality which was called a scholarship academic one at that nowadays though we're bitching and moaning about players getting cut and if you are a professional then you should be able to get cut Fire. and if the coach can't cut you and doesn't take because when they do try to push you out they take major heat oh the, play, the coach is getting rid of this guy and well listen you can transfer in a heartbeat after you take my nil money though there's no issue there. I don't hear people bitching about that. But when a coach cut, tries to cut your ass, he's taking major heat. So, like, I'm trying to figure out if you're a professional and we don't want to go to class and do those things you mentioned, a couple things you mentioned, which I agree with, then we got to be able to cut you on a spot, too. Boom. And you got to be able to I get agree. cut. So, I agree. I mean, and, and it should be, look, we just need to get into the same rules as every other professional sport. Major League Baseball and hockey have junior leagues that don't operate like – colleges you get I, I fired. Just, you get cut you get hired you go to junior you don't when you go to juniors in hockey you don't go fucking uh to class before you go to skate around when when you go to double a or triple a baseball they don't have you taking classes beforehand i mean football and like the whole college system is going to grow up a little bit here bro like it's but okay great first, point first of all like under trying to Tell these kids that at 22 years old, you need to know what you're going to do for the rest of your life when they get out of college. That's some 1960s shit. That also has played out. So, like, you have time. You When you get out of college, you still have time to figure out what you want to do if you're not playing professional sports. But if you're an athlete and you want to go to the league, you have no time. Like, you, we don't, I don't have time to go fuck around with the history class if I'm trying to go train for the NFL. You feel me? Like, come on. Real quick, JB, I know you got something to say real quick. my So I, I hear what you're saying, Matt. My only concern is that, number one, majority of the guys are not going to the league. We all think we are once we're there. I thought I was at Ball State. We all think we are. But majority of us are not going to the league. So that's number one. So number two, that that scholar, that scholar uh, that degree, excuse me, is going to be very useful for majority of the people who are not going to the league. And my concern is, as an 18, 19-year-old kid going into college, if you have the mindset of, I'm going to the league, none of them are going to want to are going to use that scholarship money to pay for school. So what's well, going to happen is we're going to have a lot of these kids who are just went to college, didn't make the league, didn't get a degree, and you just kind of wasted a huge investment opportunity of your life. Yeah, I, but, they have, but the choice is the point. Hey, like, I got two you, things. They have, you have the choice to fuck up. Yeah. Everywhere else, you have the choice to fuck up. In football, you have to take history class and go to fucking practice. The, the, you know, how There's long until things. how long until these kids are allowed to go to the UFL mm. before well, uh, I, and not go to college? Thing. Okay, I got two things. To your point originally, the thing you said about you know growing up. This uh, my point is like I. My take, my side of the thing is, aren't we growing up too fast on one side, but yet slower on the other? Meaning this, we're telling, we're telling these kids at 18 that they can drive a Hellcat as their first car. They learn zero value of a dollar or a life, not even uh, alone their own life. We've seen the Jalen Carters. We've seen these other issues. ATN just got a DUI and his Hellcat that he was gifted by his university. I see a lot of issues on that side. The other side is Smitty's side. There's no the degrees are worth shit. 
the degree is you can wipe your ass with a degree nowadays. To Matt's point, as that's if that's my point, dog. But the degree world is evolved. To to degree is- yeah, to Matt's point, the world's evolved to where we don't say tell us what to do anymore. It's not the 60s anymore. So I agree with that side of it. But the degree side to, to Smitty side, I disagree with only for the fact that everyone's trying to be a TikToker, an IG model, a YouTuber. And there are, there's some sort of trade out there now that they go into after their football career hits a dead end in college. They don't go straight to the workforce anymore. They go right. to social media and they, don't really and, they, yeah, and they don't go back and get degrees. Back to my first point, that Smitty's point goes back to my first point, though. Aren't we telling these kids to grow up too fast? Because I'm just trying to be no, honest. Like The NFL product is the ultimate hierarchy that's being affected here. And I say this because college coaching, in my opinion, has become lackluster. It's become lazy. It's become enabled. It's become begging you to stay at my university before I coach you and scared to leave. That's Did you hear what the Utah State coach said from the, the first tournament's been awesome, by the way. It's, I love it. But Utah State didn't have one returner from this year using basketball from last year, not one point scored, right? And the coach, they quoted the coach saying, Oh, yeah, it's become way easier. We just do Zoom meetings now, and people are in the transfer portal. We don't need to recruit. They come to us. And I'm like, Holy shit. Yeah, bro. Like, it is, so but it's, it's true. I mean, I get it, but it, it, I don't know if that's lazy or smart. I don't know. <laughs> hey, to, well, and I, what we do know, what we do know is it is though, it's a lack of relationships being built. Oh, the, the relationship part is done, man. I had the same high, head coach on the same position coach for five years when I was in school, bro. And I'm so glad I played when I did, regardless of all the money, money comes and goes, but the, the relationship part of college, all my boys, like my, one of my best friends died three weeks ago and we all played with him. And it, like these days, it, what, are you going to have like a third of your teammates at your funeral? Maybe 10 guys come back because no one knows you. You're just, you're all mercenaries. Mm. Everybody I walked into at the service is one of my brothers I played with for three, four, five years. So we still, t- we still taught everybody's close. And it's a huge community. I, I don't know if it's still like that out there. I don't think it is. Judging by everybody that I work with and all these guys that jump around place to place and place, college football has become the same it's as not, the NFL. It's all listen, acquaintances. It, There's it, no more brothers. It's not because you wouldn't leave Alabama to go to Iowa, which you originally uh, committed to out of high school, the state you're from, Iowa. You commit there. Two days before signing day, you go to Alabama. You sign to Alabama. You're a freshman All-American there. You play there. You get to the BCS pl- or the champ. You get to the playoffs, uh, a play away from beating Michigan to go to the finals. And bam, I transferred to Iowa again where I originally committed to. But yet, oh, guess what? I know how she tastes. I know how she smells. I know how she fucks. I still went back to her. Mm. There's no reason you go back to her unless there's money, money, money. And that's all it is. And Ohio State gets a kid from Alabama only to lose him again three months later. So Bama sends a, a corner from Bama, goes to Ohio State. He goes to spring ball. He Now he's gone, and he's back in the portal. And I'm like, this isn't a really a, a way to – to tr- to raise kids, dog. Like I saw an interesting. To your point, we can move on. I I I got an interesting stat here. I saw that the um one of these college teams the, and, and the quarterbacks, the actual quarterbacks in the draft, they're older than three year NFL starters right now. They're older. They're older than them all right now. Yeah. And back in the day, Matt, you remember. The, the Winkies of the world wins the Heisman. He's 28. He gets drafted first round. He doesn't last very long. And then we're all like, oh, we're, we're not taking these old cats no more. They're, they're not very long in the business. Now all these dudes are fucking 24, 25 years old. And there's there's three-year starters in the league already that's that same age. Burrow, Trevor Lawrence, Kyler Murray, uh, Jim uh, Allen. They're all the same age as these dudes coming out of college right now. So that's the where I disagree with one of your takes the point about being in the in the college this long. Like, are we really helping them by being in the college this long either? Like, no. I don't know. No, no. Look, look. If you're a elite NFL talent, you leave early. 
if you're a good NFL player, you play in college and you get a couple years in the league and get your pension and that's that. If you're just a good college player, you probably play the full five, take your shot, and it doesn't work. But usually the elite athletic guys go early, and, and that that's still going to happen. There's still going to be guys leaving early that, that do it. Um, you may get more mature uh, men in the NFL rather than, you know, guys that just got out of college and are just trying to, I don't know, like if they're older, they might be more mature. I don't know. But, uh, but, but that's what's happening, Matt. These guys are getting traded two years in, three years in for a Chico stick and a string cheese. Justin Fields traded for a 25-6 round. Mac Jones, get, just get rid of that motherfucker. These are first-round guys that they yeah. took just two, three years ago. Now we're throwing them to the wayside just to recycle again and bring in a new cat. And now those well, kids may be older. Well, let's let's be real. The CBA allows for that. You can fuck up now and overdraft somebody and then not get hurt by it. Remember, they drafted Rosen one year in Arizona, and then the next year they drafted Kyler Murray and just cut Josh. So yeah. back in the day, like when I was playing, they they drafted Sam Bradford. He was the last bonus baby. And that, that motherfucker got paid like $75 million up front, homie. I remember I was in Miami when Jake Long went number one. And Jake got a – I think his bonus check was like $64 million bucks. Like, I, shit, if you miss on that guy, you're fucked. Like, you're, you're, your cap is hurt. That's like signing Russell Wilson. But if you miss these days, you know, you can get you can get away with it. Let's dive into another, another topic real quick before we dive into our last one before you get out of here. Bill Self, head coach of KU basketball, uh, has been in hot water the last few days because he said that he's looking towards next year for the past few months. Um, I mean, go ahead and take it. You already it. feel like I got to start thinking about you know, next season or oh, you, you got to absorb this for a little while. Well, I think for – for the last month, I've been thinking about next season, to be honest, uh, not in the moments during the game, but, you know, uh, uh, you know, obviously we, we played, we had eight guys on scholarship and, 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 and we play, I mean, that were healthy there late and, you know, injuries are part of the game. So that's not, that's not an excuse, but, but we could have done uh, a much better job as a staff uh, 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 putting more guys out there that we could play. Uh, and so that's something that I've thought about for a long time. And and the thing the thing about it is in basketball, you know, early on you can play through some things, but the course of a season there's a grind that goes with it, and and bodies get run downs, injuries occur. That's all part of it. And when you don't have as as much firepower or as you know that that maybe you've had in past years it certainly showed this year let me let me address it first because i'm i'm tired of these fucking non these no i, I just straight out well i'm just going to be honest matt they're fucking nobodies uh, i'm tired of hearing about nobody's talking about people like bill self coaching and what he said uh what it means i want to dive into this real quick with you and smitty that played and coached like first of all my last year, before my last year at Indy, we went two and eight on Netflix the last season of that show. After we were one and three, I believe, we won the first game and we lost three in a row. I was already, I already knew my team. I knew we had a shitty fucking nucleus. I knew what I needed to do because I was going to have, everyone, if you coach long enough, is going to have a bad year. That was my bad year in the last 20 as a head coach. So I said, you know what? I'm already rewrapping the weight room middle of the fucking season. I'm already recharacterizing our program. I'm already I'm now I'm going to reculture my new already built culture. That's what happens in coaching. When you want to be better, you do things like that. You think ahead. Forward thinkers are real people, by the way, especially in this business that he can be fired over any minute now. And you're all giving him heat that he's thinking forward. He's shitting on this team. And no, he's not. He's thinking about keeping his job, which you guys all want him fired now in Lawrence. And he's thinking about how he's going to get better at a program that's a blue blood like that. We've all been there as coaches. Matt, I'm sure, is thinking ahead of what I can do in this space and how I can organize this. And I'm going to, Smitty's thinking ahead of how I can be better at this and this. Dog, if you don't think that is real, then you never coached or played a sport and you should just shut the fuck up. Because people think this is as a personal attack on his current team. 
it blows my mind, dog. There's deeper dive. The deeper dive is this, though, Matt. I see him as a coach and looking, knowing the guy and looking at him like, he's like, this is a fucking shitbird ass team that I got. I'm ready to move the fuck on and get a bunch of new cats. Because in the portal era, as you just said, Matt, this is fucking, they're going to come at me and I'm going to go selectively go at them. And I'm like, he's clearly like, oh, fuck. I couldn't wait to lose that game. Like, look at him. He ain't really tripping like normal losing a game and, 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 and to go to the Sweet 16. He's sitting there like, fuck this team. I'm ready to move on. Like? Well, but you're not going to see a lot of that emotion anymore, bro. You'll see it from players. Coaches, coaches have checked out on the emotional part now. They don't have to do it anymore. Look, I, look the coaches may hate this, but deep down – they like the fact that they can just tell a kid to fuck off and leave because adults hate teenagers, bro. Let's just be real. I work with teenagers all day and they work hard and shit and all that, but I fucking hate them 90% of the time because they're kids they are dumb. I will say this though. <laughs> What's the difference between Bill self saying what he said and coach prime saying, I got to go find five offensive linemen. That's so what. Matt, you hit the nail on the head. There's no goddamn difference, dog. And I, I'm not mad at Bill Self for saying that he's thinking about next season. Did anybody watch the game? Gonzaga had 10, 12 guys deep on the bench. They're running circles around Kansas. Kansas brought in the dude from Michigan, and they had a bunch of guys hurt. And Bill Self sitting there like, what the fuck? I thought we were Kansas. I can't get these guys. So in the middle of the game, he's sitting there going, how does Gonzaga have better personnel than we do? Um, and he's he's thinking about next year. Look. Let's think about this. Let's go back to Coach Prime. Do you think when he was playing with the 49ers and the 49ers were beating the Cowboys in the playoffs to go to the Super Bowl and the 49ers won the Super Bowl and then the next year he was a free agent and they were like, hmm, what should we do? You think Jerry Jones and Dallas was sitting on the sideline during the NFC title game going, that guy's going to be a free agent. Maybe we should get him next year. Is that forward thinking? Is that wrong? No. That is called strategy. That is called Forward thinking, like Coach said, that is that has the ability to see the future by by judging the past. So, I uh, I I think that there's there's a lot of just people that are just they're so wrapped up and thinking this is like a fucking a movie or like a like there's only one way to do things, and there's not. Now, Bill Self maybe like just to criticize one thing, maybe don't say it. If you don't want to get the heat, don't say it. But if you're going to say it, bro, stand up for it, period. Yeah. And by the way, the only difference yeah. I see in the, what you brought up with the prime thing is self has won natties. He's a guy that says, you know what? Fuck you. I'm one before. I'm going to get back to that. Prime's trying to get to that. So I don't see a difference in chasing the guys. He has also said he's not doing home visits, which is I totally agree with. People are giving him heat for the home visit thing. First of all, there's no reason to do a home visit. Who There's probably, literally not one fucking reason to do a home visit anymore yeah, in this for what? current landscape. Bro, let's get on Zoom and make – why do I need to get on a plane and fly to fucking Jacksonville? Well, just get on a Zoom call for 30 well, minutes. Ultimately, you're going to come, come see my facilities facility anyway. So just yes, come. bro, thank you. I'm, I'm not coming to Jacksonville to train your kid. Your kid's coming to Boulder to play for Coach Brian. Be man. real, though, y'all. Be tight, real quick. Yeah. Be real. Didn't that shit feel special though when you was getting recruited and the fucking yeah. head coach yeah, knocked on your door was, and your mom was cooking? Yeah, but Schmitty, I had a rotary telephone, homie. Did it at a five? Did it at a six? I, like Chris Rock style. It was it was that was the nineteen ninety seven when I was getting fucking recruited, and the coach that I was getting recruited by was three minutes down the road, so he drove me to my house. Yeah, but Schmitty, I had a rotary telephone, homie. Did it at a five? Did it at a six? I like Chris Rock style. It was nineteen ninety seven when I was getting fucking recruited, and the coach that I was getting recruited by was three minutes down the road, so he drove me to my house and handed me a jersey. Like, yeah, it was cool, but you know what was cooler? What? Going to the field and the facilities and like that, that is where we're, that's where it's at. If you, if you're really tripping over home visits, man, like. Here's the home visit issue. I though. Love it. It's probably the same people tripping over home visits who are like, like uh, globalists who are like fucking, oh my God, we got to get electric cars. But my coach can take a fucking jetliner every three days to go get a kid. My head coach came to the hood though, late at night by itself. Now, okay. Now that's you know I mean. Now, now look, that's it. That, that's it. I feel coach, special, coach, man. I'm like, damn, he really coach won't be. Prime, if Coach Prime wants to bag these top players, uh, but then again, he already got Hunter and Seaton and all these other cats, so maybe he doesn't need to. It might, it might be a good thing to just show up at somebody's house. That might mean something. But at the, maybe that's what he's saving it for, though. Too. Let's be real. Yeah. Maybe he's maybe he's manipulating. Look, 
If I've learned anything about Coach Prime and Colorado is they manipulate the fuck out of the media. Period. They they put stuff out there, they leak shit, and then they manipulate it and they play the media and make people look like fucking idiots, myself included a couple times. So I'm not saying that everything he's saying right now isn't going to flip in six weeks and he's going to be on some some dude's deck, the number one player in the country, being like, oh, yeah, I just set y'all up so I could come bag this dude at his house. And Here, you know, Here's the reason on the whole home visit thing. Shit. This is why I defend Dion on the home visit thing. Number one, because I've talked to several head coaches at the four-year level, power five guys that are fr I'm friends with, and they've said, listen, Jamie, there's no reason – to really do all the proactive recruiting we used to do there. That's why you're seeing less and less of 2027 commit because there's no such thing. There's no such thing anymore, by the way, just contrary to belief. Number one, they've taken the SAT ACT out. Let's be clear. They've taken that out. Okay. Number two, now it is straight film. Can you be a basic 2.0 GPA in high school? And then I and this guy don't lie. I'm looking at your fucking film. If it pops off at me, I'll probably come to a game, probably come see you at school one day. But the home visit thing is the simple fact that when you go do one, the topic of discussion isn't how good your fucking pork chops are. It's about how much money can you get me? And that no. is what they're saying. Fuck you. I'm not going to do a home visit with you because I'm not discussing money with a 17, 15, 16 year old that's already owed a big bag of money. But okay. So my my two B fifteen year old is about to start five A freshman football as a freshman next year in high school, and I'm going to use another kid, Brett Cool J, who started with me in seventh grade, the same way Nick and Moon and all these other freaks did. My son Nick. So I can see the progression because I saw it from Drake and Salsa and all these other guys before Brett came. And Brett was at Georgia and Tennessee this weekend holding up all the title rings and getting courted by Kirby. And he's going to be a junior at IMG. And that kid has every fucking right to ask them how much money he, he's going to get. Period. Because that's the name of the game. Now, the frame on how it's done needs to be different maybe. Maybe they should allow kids to have agents. Maybe they, maybe they should allow or maybe try and educate the, the parents so they don't sound like just money grubbers when they stick their hand out. But you got to be fucking kidding me if you don't think in a year or two when I when Nick plays his freshman year and we've all, we're already going to Kansas State, Nebraska, Oklahoma, and Colorado for junior days. He's not even in high school yet. And he's already been on recruiting trips. So let's say he plays his freshman balls out, goes into his sophomore year, he's 6'6", six, six, 300 pounds as a sophomore because he's that's where he's going and he's a four-star recruit and he's getting recruited and everybody's on his back when we go on trips you don't think that i'm going to press them on how much money my kid could get bro i'm gonna hold their ass over the fucking fire like you've never seen anybody hold a coach over the fire in your life because i actually know what i'm talking about i know the way this business works and that's that's what i think whole full circle this is what i think what it is they want everyone ignorant that's why there's no agents. That's why there's no money managers. The NCAA and the coaches want all the parents and kids dumb and only money motivated. That's why that's how they can control them. Knowledge is power. And in the information age, ignorance is a fucking choice. So if you want to be dumb and act like you don't know, and oh my God, I can't figure it out. You don't know how to Google. Like there's so many resources out here, bro. You've got to figure out your own worth in order to maximize that. But also... If you don't want to piss off a coach, if you don't want to piss off Nick Saban or this guy or that guy, man, at some point you need to be educated in what you're talking about. Be educated in what you're discussing. You show up ready at, to talk about money and talk about opportunity and, you know, are you a program jumper? Are you just looking for a bag? Like coaches need to be able to, how do I say this? Coaches need to be able to like, to weed through the, the people that don't know what they're talking about. It's a red flag. So I, I would say that, you know, get smart before you, you just walk in somewhere and go, Hey, can I get a bag? Like, no, hold on, hold on. Why are you worth this money? What are you going to do with it? How are you going to manage it? Like, and it's on the colleges and the, and the, the institutions to do that as well. If they're not asking the kids what they're going to do with the money, like at some point, both sides have got to come together and start working together rather than just this side bitching about these points, this side bitching about these points and having a big void in the middle. But we all have to work together on Saturday. Eventually, that ain't going to work, bro. I, 
eventually I, it's not going to work. And that's why, like, am I, am I for not going to home visit? No. Like I want to home visit you, but, but not in this landscape. Thank you. you can't. You'll get left behind. Like, it's about keeping up with the Joneses now. I've been told this by Sark, by Lane, by certain people. Like, it's keeping up with the Joneses now, JB. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, JB, if you don't think that you have to get in the portal and not use it, then you're going to be out of the business. And I'm like, really? This was two years ago. And I'm like, yeah. really? And now I'm seeing it. I'm like, we want to do the home visit because that's the relationship you get Bill. It's, it's, it's the best go getter gets that kid, right? It's the best go getter gets a bill a relationship, sit at home, go through the process. Now it's like, dog, you're wasting your time, effort, resources, and money doing 20 home visits, flying across the country, doing all this shit. Coach Yo just told us the head coach at Ole Miss, by the way, they won their first round game versus Marquette. Shout out. By the way, she said it. Coach, I got to fucking go fly across the country, get back for practice the same day, or I got to fly across country, meet, do a home visit or meet a person at a, at a game, and then get back to play an actual game. She's like, it's fucking insane. And she's like, it's, 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 going, it's getting out of control. So in this current landscape, I don't want to fucking do a home visit because I can't. I can't afford it, not only time-wise, money-wise, resource-wise, only for that kid to say at the end of the day, uh... I'm going to go to a selector school, meaning Alabama, Ohio State, you know, the, the team that just called me last minute. Going and, there anyway. That's what I'm saying. Like, why are you wasting Look, your time, dog? Nothing changed. It's just the, the institutions that always had the money, and we're doing this anyway. Let's be real. If you don't think the SEC powerhouses in Ohio State and Michigan and Texas were underdog handshaking motherfuckers for 100 years, and I you are that. the dumbest son of a bitch alive. Like I think that's this is just out in the open now. That's all it I, is. I miss those days. Uh, well, then, so do I. I look. There was. I don't mean to look. I'm not trying to sound like a criminal when I say this, but <laughs> I was raised by Dave McChesney. Okay. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes criminals and organizations that do things kind of shady. Do things really, really carefully so they don't go to fucking jail. So, like when you have when you have a hundred year handshake rule with a lot of these schools and they never get caught, really. I mean, let's be real, you never really hear about this. You hear about guys selling championship rings and Cam Newton and shit, but realistically, you don't hear about it every year, and it's happening crazy like everywhere. When you never hear about it, but you know it's happening, but you can never prove it, that's exactly what being a criminal is. So I'm just saying, like, it seemed like it was a little bit better organized when all the shady motherfuckers were handling it, and then they handed it to the business people at the universities, and now it's a clusterfuck. Maybe they should just let the mob keep running this. Shout out to uh, Hassan. Yeah, hey, shout, out, shout out to the mob. Let's get, you know, a, let's get a quick uh, – let me get a quick – we got a poll question out there, Matt. Uh, we got about three minutes to discuss that before we get into uh, the Dion take on Gilly's podcast. <sighs> I can't wait to talk to you about this shit. All right. Should should women referee men's sports? You? Yes, bro. Who gives a shit? Women referee men's sports. I any guess. any man. I don't care. I don't care. You don't care, but should they? That's yes, the it's a ref. All, all refs are just zebras to me. Zebras are, I don't care your gender. You're a blind fucking idiot. If you want to be a ref, you're a moron, period. I don't care if you're a man or a woman or a fucking uh, a fucking Teletubby. I don't give a fuck what you are. You're a ref. And all refs are equal. You suck. Damn. Done. They're not equal, but. Oh, my God. I'm not getting into this with you again today. I'm yeah, not they're not you. equal. I'm, you're not baiting me today, motherfucker. Nope. Hey, look at that. She got mad, Matt, that he handed her the ball, gave, her a tea, gave him a tee because it was too violent. How many times have we seen this? Too. Matt, how many times have we seen this same scenario with men refs getting emotional and making bad calls? Refs are the worst, bro. You can't say the NBA and college basketball, you can get teed up for fucking farting too loud, bro. <laughs> T, get the fuck out. Like, they threw the kid out from Auburn the other day for throwing, in, like, one little elbow. Like, come on, dog. That shit happens all the time. And then they lost to a bunch of bankers. And it was a man refereeing that it kicked yeah. him out. Man. Exactly. It blows Come my on. mind. Man. J yeah. Matt, JB is reaching right here. Uh, oh, no, I'm not. It's actually embarrassing that you fucking have this take. 
It's embarrassing that you have this tape. I, I really it's the really only argument you have is if really a fight breaks out, what are they gonna do? Come I on, really bro. feel embarrassed for you. I'm we don't we we don't care if if women can be refs. Who Not in a mid court. I don't believe no. Hey Matt, his one argument was if a fight breaks out on the court or the field, what are the women gonna do? How many no, fights are like argument. real fights are happening every okay, single game? Not moving the needle. That's not the argument. The, the argument was the actual factor that a woman is out there is going to allow for more things to spiral so out of control. Should, should, should they not uh, – should women not commentate men's games either? If it was up to me, I would say no. <laughs> Damn, dog. All right, let, let's talk about CU, bro. I'm not going to try and get into this conversation. Yeah, I know. I, know, I don't, don't want to – I already have a yeah. – all, all your fucking cronies on here that are – I know. And I didn't have one female come to my back, so thanks for that. Awesome. Fuck, I've had, I've had all females on my back and all beta males against me. <laughs> nah, you had a couple women go at your Instagram. Don't, don't, don't. Come on now. They're from, your, they're from your fucking page, not mine. Anyway, <laughs> Matt, don't get it twisted, Matt. They're from That's fucking so Smitty's man. fucking page. They're from this Smitty's what I'm talking about. Page. You motherfuckers. I'm not on their side or his side. I'm you motherfuckers. It's him. He's the motherfucker. We're, we're trying to help you. This is why hey. we don't want to get involved because hey. Hey, Matt, is wrong. Seri- Matt, I'm seriously trying to figure. I can. I'm seeing how Trump became so popular. I'm like, fuck it. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go that way. Fuck it. Yeah, that's a good uh, idea because that's who I'm voting for. Everything I do today is just fuck it. Everything's against the grain. <laughs> Bro, I dig that. That's the way I operate my life. All right, uh, let's do this, motherfucker. Let's talk. Come on, dog. Come throw, throw the fucking throw it. There you go. Thank you. Okay, so. First of all, I'm not gonna just I'm not just starting a fight. I want to make sure that I'm no, let's fight, <laughs> fight. Right, 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 right. Hold on, I want to make sure it's clear what's said so we can do an investigative journalism here, Smitty. I already watched it. I want to go viral, JB. Okay, so Deion Sanders said that certain teams will be off limits. That's what he said, off limits. Uh, when it comes to drafting Shadur and Travis Hunter. I know where I want them to go. Uh, there's certain cities where it's not going to happen, blah, blah, blah. We're going to do an Eli Manning sort of thing. All right, so um, on this guy's co- podcast, whoever this fuck is. So having said that. Could have said the same thing about me when I had him on. <laughs> right, like, no, million I, dollar I, the game is one of the biggest podcasts now right now. We ain't got to hate. We ain't got to hate. Like, the, you know what I mean? Like, we use like this. I said whoever those fucks are. I didn't hate. Why did I hate? What are their names, really? I, I want to be clear. How am it's I Gilly the Kid and Wallow. Million dollar worth the game. They do a really good job, actually. Okay. I didn't say they did it. When did I say they did it? Nah, I'm just no, no. Well, I we just broke, said we broke yes. him up. You was like, "Who is this no, fuck? No, he ain't the coach. No, I'm the coach. No, I'm from no, no, like, like, come on, whoa, 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 whoa! Fuckers on social media that takes whoa. a trip and takes it and runs with it. You're no whoa. different. Whoa. It sucks. Are you fucking kidding me? Smitty took a trigger word and ran with it as I'm a hater. I ain't no fucking hater. I could give a fuck less. I never even seen one podcast. How am I hating? I said, who are these fucks? Why is that hating? They do a good job. No, 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 no. See, Smitty be taking the bullshit ass fucking soft ass route and trigger wording my ass and putting it out there like I'm the hater and shit. Is this the new thing where you just baited him? I don't give a fuck who the Gilly Cuddy is or whatever his name is. Fuck him. Cool. I think they do a good job. What's the what's the topic? Then it's good. They make more money than me and Smitty. I know that. Fuck them. Right. That's my point. So yeah, I, I can't them. talk shit about motherfucker bigger than me. Is what I'm trying to say. Hey, they don't make more money than y'all. Shut your fucking ass down. Fuck them. Okay. Now, well, now what was your what was the question? Now, what was the question? You just want me to yell at these two guys? Am I mad at them or you or who? Oh, the question is. I guess I don't have a question. I just want to get your take on this whole Deion Sanders shit. Uh, okay, so, so let's. I'll you all call him. Torts. I think y'all call him Prime up there. Well, I call him Coach Prime. Sanders. Well, I call him Coach Sanders. Sanders. Y'all call him Prime. So yeah, well, let's amazing. dive into Prime's take on where his kids will and won't go. Before I ask you question, before I get that from you, I want to. Yes. I want you to get my take on this. Um, oh. Of course. Not my take on that. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you talk first, but I want to get I want to get this take from you. Yes. Don't you think we lack, and I use the word force, forcing children to become to be children? 
I think we used to do that. Your dad did that to you. My dad did it to me. I think your mom did it to you. We forced forced you to be a child. I think we forced, our parents forced us to be children, meaning this is the car you're getting. You're going to learn this, how to drive this shitty car. And you're going to like it or wear it. Like, there's no, here's a Lamborghini. I know you don't know how to change the brakes. Go, (laughs) take it. So, I'm just saying, Matt, aren't we, wouldn't it, I'm just asking you a question, Matt. Wouldn't you rather force kids to be kids than allow them to be adults when they're not ready? No. If, if their right. father is Deion Sanders, dog, it's not normal. Well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just saying in general, though, we're seeing it a lot. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the majority of kids, can I all I do is work with pretty much high school kids and young college players. The majority of them are 99% of them are in old fucked up trucks and 15 year old fucking civics and like, you know, like changing their tires out in front of the fucking gym. Cause one of them's flat after the work. Like not every single kid is like just getting handed bags and super fucking spoiled. Like there's still a whole lot of workers out there now. Now when you have, when you're a Manning and you have the ability to say, I don't want to play for the chargers. Well, you're probably going to take some heat from it for the people who can't pull that off. But your last name is Manning. When you're, that's a football, that's a, that's one of the pillars of football families in the NFL. Okay, it's, I'm like glad the, you said. It's, like the, it's like the Matthews and like I'm glad you the said Long. That. You know what I'm saying? And like the Sanders are, that's where they're going because Shiloh and Shador are about to be draft picks next year. And Shador might be number one. So that they're going to have a pillar too. They're going to have a they're going to have a uh, fucking pillar in the NFL that's the Sanders pillar. When you have that ability, you can get away with shit like this, bro. I'm sorry. I know that there's a lot of folks that hate it, but look, he can get as fucking adamant behind the mic as he wants, but to act like that to act like it's not real and to tell me that Carson Beck and Dylan Gabriel somehow should get more shine than Shador. If it was Shador Gabriel and he played at Oregon and he had the same numbers, you would be blowing him sideways. So because you, because you and the rest of your fucking cronies over here in the comments, because you guys know that being negative against coach prime and Shador and everything that they put out, because you know that everybody's going to latch onto that and you found a fucking community of hate well, that's all you can roll with is your community of hate. You can't see through. You can't see through what's actually happening. So when I say this, he should dictate where his kids go. Shiloh won't have a choice. He'll be a fourth or a fifth rounder probably. But Shador and Travis will absolutely have a choice. And to be completely honest with you, both of them will be in the, in the New York for the Heisman if they stay healthy. CU is going to win a lot of games. Shador might be the first quarterback off the board, and Travis Hunter might be the first pick overall, dog. You're getting a a two-way elite talent like I've never seen before. So let's just step back a little bit and look at what's actually happening and remove the last name and the the name on the chest. There's There's not many schools or fan bases in this country that wouldn't take those two. I'm... You okay. wouldn't want to coach him. You wouldn't. You wouldn't take Shador Sanders and go. Fuck yeah! I'm going to go throw forty touchdowns and four picks in college. Well, yeah. motherfucker, what are you? What are we talking about? He's not in the league yet. That's what I'm saying. But we're projecting him as number one. That's what you well, said. Well, hold yeah, on. At the same oh, time, on. that's the way this works. When you yeah, go yeah, ball in college, hey, you get drafted. Well, I, I would love to have Lamar Jackson in college football over anybody, but I wouldn't want him in the NFL. Lamar Jackson's oh. won two MVPs, dog. Don't fucking sit here and act like he's okay, a but that doesn't mean I still want him in the NFL. Like the winning score at my, my President Mahomes playing ACC game. Okay, let's, okay, let's keep it in order here. I want to address that. I want to address you that. Have you ever given a chick flowers in your life, ever? No. Yeah, I, uh, that's not surprising. I want to I want to address Matt's take first. I have a flip side. To your coin. Flowers, <laughs> I got a flip side to your coin though. Fuck I you, mom. Say, Ninety years old, no flowers. <laughs> I would say if if Shador Sanders had a if Shador's last name was Gabriel, he'd be absolutely fucking nobody. So Dude, I he, I believe that just because he cool. has hold on, I let you talk. Sanders' Dude, last yeah. name carries weight, Matt. And I don't believe he's as good as you think he is. And it, just because he does have the last name, 
I think it's opposite of what you think. I think if Dylan Gabriel's last name was Sanders, we'd be riding his fucking meat all day, every day. So Deion Sanders' name but, carries but weight. Numbers. Or Sanders' name has more weight because of the Sanders on his back of his name than anything else over his play. Now, that's what I think. Now, but, but I'm not saying it's not good, Matt. I agree with you, Matt. I do. I, I 36 touchdowns, four, whatever he did, unbelievable. I'm not Pretty saying – but I want to know where humility is. Man. Man, I, I agree with that, Matt. But I also, but I also want to know where you, where the humility has gone in our, in our, in our. Man, fuck humility, coach. All right. What, well, what about humility? Take okay, here. I got humility. here. No fuck humility, you. though, creates no hierarchy. Oh my God! You of all people, you talking about humility. Shut the fuck up. Hey, if I, Matt. The reason, if I was, I was two and eight on the last show on Netflix, I yeah, was, you were, was you, you, I was, you were all the time. I was trying to rebuild the culture already in the year during yeah, the middle of the year. You never, you never once thought that you were a scrub just because you had a bad record, did you? Yeah, yeah. I, I questioned you thought, myself. You thought you thought you were a scrub. You're all a scrub, but I questioned myself like, what do I got to well, do? Different? Everybody questions themselves. Yeah, like. Dog. You do get down, Matt. We all have down oh, moments I, in this I, game. I, 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 I broke my ankle. I shattered my ankle, and I was like, fuck. I came back, and I was shitty, and I was like, fuck, man. My career might be over. I question my shit every day. I was like, oh, fuck. I'm done. Like, you all have – we have our peaks and valleys, Matt. Okay, so let me ask you this. Why can't – and I'm just asking as your boy. I'm As a guy who's been doing the show with, with you forever, I, you're my friend on top of, you know, being in the, whatever the fuck this is together, we're doing it. All right. Why can't you see the positive in any of these fucking guys ever? Whoa. What do you mean the positive? Well, I, I never... mean, bro, you go negative on Mahomes, on Lamar, on Dak, on fucking Et Shador, on everybody. If they on, on Caleb Williams, who's not that's not hard. But like if you go, you go negative on Fields, you go negative on Russ, which also is hard, but still like but I also you, get them their flowers when they need them or we deserve man, them. Dog, like, I never I you, you Mahomes has won three Super Bowls in five years and played in four, and you think he's average and Andy Reid's the guy. But why is that hating? But it it's like the definition of hating. Look, 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 look. It, it made you both pause and be quiet. No, it, it was a pause. It, it was almost oh, shocked that you like, what do you mean? What do you mean? How hating? It's like what Maddox just said it. You you always find the negative. Always, you exactly. always find the. There, there's never been a moment where, where you was like, you know what? I ain't gonna lie. Here's but a new Lamar one. Here, here, balled out here, tonight, man. Bro, he bro, five comment. touchdowns. He led the team. Like I've never heard you come on the show and just, just do that. It's always like a okay. He threw five touchdowns, but it's a whole. It's like damn. Like, it's like you know, have you ever so, seen? Have you ever seen the movie Boomerang before? Yes. Yes. All right. Where he's just got the he he just wrote Eddie Murphy's just rotating bad bitches right, and yep. every time he gets them, he like the he sees the deal, and he lays down in bed, and she falls asleep, and he pulls up the fucking covers, and she's got corns all over her feet, and he's like, "Nah, fuck this, fuck this bitch, on to the next one." I mean, look, I know standards are high, dog, but holy fuck, you think Troy Aikman's the best quarterback ever? So I'm confused. I mean, the thing is, we live in this current. We have such a recency bias, dog. Like, we refuse to look back. And it's not – these young cats want to go on fucking YouTube and see a video and start to actually think he can judge. I'm on YouTube. A current so person. Scary. No, but you don't go on YouTube to watch a fucking clip of Ken Stabler and then and then That's sit true. there and compare him to fucking Patrick Mahomes and thinks uh, the 21-year-old TikToker says, oh, no, Ken Stabler's shitty. Uh, Mahomes is better because he won me DraftKings points. This My is what we live in today. Stable, and it's not it's not hate when I say so so this is what I want to be clear with on this day right now. In 10 years from now, and Andy Reid's retired and we look up Patrick Mahomes and he's never won shit and he's been fucking average as Joe shit. And we're going to come back and I want to be clear, we want to come back and say was JB really hating or was JB actually saying factual things? Because I'm not, I've never bashed Mahomes' character. I've never bashed Lamar's character. Hey, big character. That's hating. That. That's hating to me. That's just hating to you, me. But I just be clear. Let, me, let me give you a definition, Matt, before you finish. <laughs> I want to give my definition of hating. I want to give my definition of hating real quick. Well, you would know. Hating is 
judging a dude that you do not know for his actions that you know nothing about. <laughs> That's hating. That's number, so, one. Hey, on. number one. <laughs> you, know, hey, you know you said some cold <laughs> shit when, when, when you got to respond to your own shit. Number <laughs> one. <laughs> number one. That's hating. Number two. <laughs> number two. When you tell the truth about what you see on film, judging a person in your profession that you actually have the right to make an opinion about is not hating. <laughs> it's called what Smitty says, facts. Well, motherfucker, I have the right to give you facts on what I see on film and how I break it down and judge it and judge it. Based on the play caller and Andy Reid, based on what I see with this, what I see with that, and how is it hating? Because I, I, it, when, when, when you I watch the film... You just tell me the reason. Well, he's trying. Because when you watch the tape, JB, it is literally no way in hell that you're not seeing any positive. There's no mean, way. So, so here, okay, let me, ask you, let me ask you this. Let me just ask you. You're the quarterback guru. Yeah, We're okay. fucking linemen. Yep. I'm a, I I send you shit on quarterbacks all the time and ask your opinion. Do I not? You know more about this position than I do, but I'm also not naive to it. So I have an opinion, but I'm going to go to you the majority of the time. Even when I think you're wrong, I'm going to ask. Now, <clears throat> let's say next year, CU's 10-2. and two. They make the playoff. They lose in the first round, whatever. And Shador goes for, let's just say he improves on last year. So he's got 44 touchdowns and six picks and 4,000 yards passing. And Travis Hunter has 70 catches and 1,000 yards and fucking like four picks, and he's doing Travis Hunter shit, right? Let's just say all that happens, and which I really think could happen because they, they have really fortified their team, and it's I think it's different than it was last year with the good skill players added to actually quality big guys that can do the job, okay? <coughs> Are you willing to say that you're wrong ever? Because, bro, the yeah, like, I, 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 I pride myself on the ability to say, like, for example, when the Broncos drafted Garrett Bowles, and maybe you two, this was before we started working together, but I was known around this town as the guy who just despised Garrett. I thought he was awful. And for the first four years of his career, he was God fucking awful. I mean, terrible. One of the worst offensive linemen I've ever seen. And then they hired Mike Munchek. And he straightened Garrett out, turned him into an all-pro. And the first thing, I couldn't wait to get on the radio and say, I'm wrong. I ate, I'll eat crow. Garrett's an all-pro. He really figured this out. But the other part of it for four years of being awful was true also. But the ability to say, hey, man, I'm not right all the time. I make mistakes. My evaluation was a little off here. What is it going to take for some of these future Hall of Fame quarterbacks and future first-round quarterbacks to get that from you? I, I will eat crow all day long. I've always said I'll eat crow, and I'll admit. I'm not going to say I'm sorry because that's who I am, but I will admit being wrong. I have no issue with that. Like, you came on this show last year. You and I both went at Sean Payton, and we both said we might be wrong. Sean Payton may know what the fuck he's doing, rebuilding this thing. I, I have no issue going back and say I'll eat crow on something, but I'm not saying I'm sorry because I wouldn't have said in the first place if I have to go back and apologize later. But I will eat crow and say, you know what? I was wrong. Like, I have no issue with saying that. I want to see Mahomes do. Listen, I'm going to say what I say is crazy. It's going to sound crazy to the novice fan. Wow, it's crazy. Like it's crazy how you can't say shit no more. As a fucking, the, the guy that actually knows what he's talking about can't say anything because he's worried about fucking Twitter gurus saying, oh, you're crazy. Now say what you want. Fuck him. I, I know. But I want to say, I want to see him do more. And I know both of you are going to be like, what? Who? This is what I mean, though. So no, no, no. Mahomes. This is what I mean, though. We've seen him in playoffs. <laughs> I know. They said, I told you. That's the reaction I was going to get. And this is what I want to mean, though. This last, last Super Bowl was the first and four that he threw for over 300 yards, finally. Yeah, he but the really same as the other three where he came back in the fourth quarter. Yeah, yeah I'm not saying it. What I'm saying is he 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 had – by the way, we we, we refused – and this is – we're going to talk about all the uh, number one defense. We could talk about all the shit that he had helping him. But anyway, like he throws more balls at or behind the line of scrimmage than any quarterback in the last six years in the history of the NFL. That's fact. It's clearly clear. They also lead the league in yak yards. Fact, meaning the ball's caught. 
behind the line of scrimmage, and he gets more yak than any other quarterback. That is the receiver's it's job. Not that he's the the reason I tell the truth about it is, Matt. It's not like he's dropping back and throwing one high dig routes outside the outside quarter cover backer in the it's hole. Nineteen ninety four. Hey, JB, you know, hey, JB yeah. love a dig route, boy. JB loves love a dig, dig route. route. I swear to God. Because you know, all who, digs. <laughs> you know who throws a dig yard? You know who throws a dig route right now? That that I really don't even like the guy, but he throws the best in the football. Purdy. Motherfucker throws dicks like like old school quarterbacks. Like I'm like fuck. But does that make him better than Mahomes though? You know what I mean? Hey, now, don't. now look, look, look. The one, one of one of one of your subscribers, I'm sure, Brandon L. All right, and I just saw this. Andy Reid has coached Far Vic, McNabb, Smith, and Mahomes. Are they all great, and why? So, so you're asking me? So he, he's asking like Andy Reid has coached Brett Favre, Hall of Famer. Michael Vick, who would have been if he wouldn't have fucked up. McNabb. Is McNabb a Hall of Famer? Not, not really. yet. Probably not. Probably Man. not a Hall of Famer. Smith. Alex Smith. Real good, real good, yeah. Well, first good, of all, Brandon L. Is, Brand, first of all, Brandon L. needs to just shut the fuck up. He's well, an he need to shut up. He's just saying that those are the guys uh, he's close. You know, Brandon, fuck you him. You know. Come over to my show. I'll, I'll honor you, dog. Fuck him. No, you won't, Matt. You'll be fucking saying get out of my show in five minutes because if you go back and look at what he's been saying, Matt, I'm just listening to your boy, Matt. He already has been talking stupid shit in the chat all morning. So here's my here's my thing about it. First of all, Michael typing stupid shit. Michael Jamie Chiefs. Shut the fuck up, Jamie Chiefs. Whoever the fuck you are. Number one, number two, real quick. Sorry, Brandon. I'm just trying to give you some love. Apparently, fuck you, Matt. I want to be clear. Michael Vick got a hundred million dollar contract from Andy Reid after <laughs> an arrest and conviction and jail time. You don't after. think Andy Reid deserves a fucking fucking hall, hall of Fame career just for doing that when they wouldn't even give this dude a, a squirt of piss to get back in the NFL? Not only did he give him a shot and start for him, he got him a hundred million dollar fucking deal. That's not greatness by Andy Reid. Okay, first of all, pause. I'll stop there. Number there two. You go. <laughs> the quarterbacks that he's developed from being absolute shit to great goes a long way in a quarterback book, by the way. I agree. I have no, right. one saying, no one's Number saying three, you're wrong. Let's be real here. Let's compare the NFC East when he was making a run to the fucking this AFC West awesome. in the last six years. Please. And let's compare the defenses on both rosters. Let's compare the that the talent. Okay. Let's they so had an P.O. They didn't have any fucking three powerhouse wide. They never had a Tyreek Hill or a Kelsey. Stop. Miss me. They never had anything close to that with Donovan McNabb. They had an older. McNabb and Terrell Owens, homie. They had an older T.O.'s, Matt. That's I just said. He wasn't. Nah, T.O. T.O. He was prime T.O. Homie. He had fucking 100 Come on, man. They didn't have Kelsey and Tyreek Hill. No, they had Terrell Owens. He was older, Westbrook. though. He wasn't T.O. at the 49ers. No, it was T T.O. And he came off a broken leg and had 140 yards in the tutty, homie. Like, he balled in the Yeah, that was still T.O., bro. Nah, that, I'm, I can't give you that. Oh, Go look it up. Let's give him T.O. One guy. Well, the Chiefs on. T.O. Good. went from Philly to Dallas and had, like, Don't, three don't compare the there. rosters, though, is what oh, I'm talking T.O. Didn't T.O. go from San Francisco to Philly, Philly to Dallas? And when he was in Dallas, he had like three straight fucking Pro Bowl seasons. Yes, so, yes. You know, that's what I'm like, come on. T.O. was in Cincinnati and Buffalo, homie. You had T.O. Hey, McNabb. Was it Brian Westbrook at the I time? Or was it before? like, bro, that Eagles team was nothing to play with, bro. Like, come on, man. Hey, listen. We, we got to yeah, make excuses up. for it. But in the day, bro, like, yeah. Mahomes is fucking different. Now, do we... Is he benefiting heavily from Andy Reid? Of course. Duh. He, Andy Reid's all time so great. Cool. But let's, let's, Holmes let's is winning these games, circle. bro. Let's take this full circle. Look, look. Let me right. We got to take a commercial, so hurry up. Yeah, but, okay, take this full circle back to Shador and Travis, because that's really what the conversation was. I, I, I would almost, I would be surprised if Coach Prime didn't control the situation. Period. I would he be did. shocked. If he didn't control the situation, if he says, all right, next year, the first pick is, come on, give me something sh- just terrible. Worst franchise, worst franchise. Let's go. Give me something. Give me something. Who's give bad? Me. The Panthers. It's the fucking, uh, let's say the, 
Washington Panthers. Why, why not? They're not going to – well, they may be at the top again. Let, fuck, man. Let's Nobody needs a QB that. no more. He's like, I don't want to go cold places, but everywhere's domed. He's not going to Green Bay. Minnesota. Like, you know, maybe, maybe Minnesota's domed. You know, I'm sitting here looking like he doesn't want him to go to certain situations where is there really a bad situation in the National Football League? That's the – right there. That's and why I disagree with Coach Bob bad that. coaches. You may not want to be associated with a coach, but I don't know if there's a bad franchise. Like, none of the franchises are inherently bad. They may have bad people working for them. But I don't see how any any team that drafts you that high, I don't see how it could be a negative. I Look, they the, the Manny's just didn't want to play for the Chargers. The Elways didn't want to play for the Colts because they knew that, that they were going to move and they knew it was a shit show before it even happened. Like, they weren't they were aware of what was happening. And no one else knew that. So I don't know if if Shador plays at the level that he's supposed to, which I don't know why he wouldn't. Um, this is going to be a very interesting topic. And honestly, I would be shocked, stunned, if Coach Prime didn't do everything humanly possible to manipulate where Travis, Shador, and Shiloh go, period. It doesn't matter where he goes. He's not going to be a good NFL quarterback. So I don't really care. Yeah, yeah, uh, that is, we'll see. We will see. And you know what? The truth of the matter is, all we can do is see what happens. That's my opinion. It's and I can see Crow on this it. show if he goes and he fucking rips it. And all I can do is wait for Patrick Mahomes' career to finish before we say he's the GOAT. Is that not fair? Well, I'm not saying he's the GOAT, but he's on the top four. I, I get it. I'm just saying, though, people are literally mad at me because I say, let's wait. Why we're so recency biased? Let's wait to see this shit. <laughs> I agree. He's done so much already, though. He's done more than high schoolers have done their home break. Career. We got to take a commercial break, Matt. We'll see you Wednesday, and, and I hope we fight uh, then, too. Hey, I love fighting. You guys have a great day, Schmitty. Great day, Coach. Great day. All the people in the comments, please come over to 0 to 60 at 10. Uh, we got a great show this morning on Monday to kick off the week. And then uh, tomorrow we're going to have JT O'Sullivan on. And I played with JT in Europe, and he's he's a, great, he's a great quarterback coach. Breaks out a ton of film. Played in the NFL for a long time as a backup. Really smart fucking cat to talk about all these quarterbacks and Shador and so on and so forth. Get a little bit of a different opinion. Uh, we'll be back on Wednesday with y'all. Go check out the swag at sixyearacademy.com. Go get yourself a body bag. That's what we're rolling, dude. So uh, come check out the new show over at Zero to Sixty on YouTube, and we're on Twitch now too. Anybody that's on Twitch. We are rolling sessions on Twitch. The podcast is on Twitch. We're blowing up there as well. Uh, so we would appreciate any and all support. We really appreciate you guys. Thank you for all you do, and have a great Monday. Hey, JT's a Cali guy, a Southern hey, JT, Cali guy. Yeah, I played with Sully in, uh, in Europe when we were there in Frankfurt. Yeah, uh, he, he, he came, in, uh, came in after he's, me from the Valley. Uh, he's that guy, bro. Yeah. He's a fucker. Uh, he's, a, he's a real hard-nosed fucking ass kicker that, you know, really demanded a lot from his team and – could really, really, really threat it. Was a good backup. Never really got a shot in the league to play, be a starter. But, I mean, he played for a good 10, 11 years. And he was uh, – I'm telling you, man, that they really need to rethink the whole Europe thing. Like, I think that the I NFL – should... We played against each other in, in college. He went, to, he went to Mesa State in yeah. Colorado. Yep. And then, like – but my thing is, like, did you ever go to Europe, Coach? Yeah, uh, Amsterdam. You went to Amsterdam. I was in Frankfurt. It wasn't not the most fucking fun you've ever had in your life. Yeah, I missed it. It's all eleven personnel. You had to. That's that was, well, it was so fucking awesome. Everyone lives too. together. Yeah, you I want to talk about developing players? Like, dude, I got so much fucking better at my craft playing in twelve games and playing for a title. Like in the off season, it's why I love the UFL. I'm really excited about it. But the NFL, with how popular. Football is in Europe right now. They, I think they fucked up on that one, bro. They need to rethink that shit. Yeah, I know. I love it. I miss it, too. Um, all right, man. I'll see you Wednesday. I appreciate it. Peace. Peace. Um, You need a break, Smitty, or no? You've been saying commercial break for like the last 20 minutes. So if you I need it, go and let us know. But I'm good to go. I'm locked and loaded. All right, let's go. I don't want to wait. make what Jeff wait. Um, Jeff Nadu. Oh, Jeff. Let's, let's, now we make Jeff wait. Lancaster's finest, Lancaster. They say. Hey, man, I don't mind. I I just came on. Go ahead. Do what you got to yeah, do. We fuck with you, Jeff. We ain't making you wait. Hey, you Jeff, a legendary a guest Lancaster out here in Cali. It's called Lancaster. It's like the widest way you can say it. It's out here. 
I know Dallas has a Lancaster High School right there on the I corridor, forty I uh, the the forty I uh, what did they call it, the uh, I ten corridor. Uh, there's a lot of good schools right there, um, but everyone says that that particular name different. It's crazy. Yeah, we do here for sure. You say Absolutely. Lancaster, Lancaster. Yep. Damn, it's crazy. That's how you know someone's not from here when they say Lang. You know. Yeah, yeah. Out here it's Lancaster. Lancaster, yeah. Like that's just yeah. crazy. Uh, yeah, it's a ghetto hood. That's where uh, you know, kind of it's like Palmdale P. P, P Paul Pierce. We call him Palmdale P out here. That's where he's from. Um, uh, but anyway, all right, Jeff, we got a lot going on here. Um, first of all, I got to get your take on this uh, Bill Self thing. He came out and basically said that he was looking forward to next year already. Uh, are you mad about this as everyone else is? Because I'm not. I, I don't think people that never coached or played have a fucking clue what they're saying. He was just forward thinking because I think he realizes either A, he has a shitbird team, or B, that he actually is in a rebuild and he's already looking to reculture and get better for next year. He's a blue blood organization. I don't believe he should look to just coach a bunch of shitbirds or average teams in a tournament. He knew he wasn't going to last long. He's forward thinking. I don't understand why he's taking so much heat in the media uh, by saying what he said. Well, I think it really comes down to the fact that they, they'd they kind of been struggling for, for weeks. Um, I don't think he really enjoyed Hunter Dickinson there, who was a transfer. Um, that kind of screwed up and, and didn't work out. He's got some good kids coming in. He's got a top 10 recruit and possibly another top 10 recruit coming in. So I don't really have any issue with it. I think you see a lot of these coaches that have been around a while. They're getting tired of some of the kind of the things that are going on now. We saw Rick Pitino say it. Um, we saw, obviously, Bill say it. Tom Izzo's talked about it. Um, I think you're starting to see, and this is where I think down the road, I mean, th these coaches are going to just go away. We um, saw the dude at uh, Purdue. Yeah. Painter. Yeah. Painter said it. Um, I mean, it. listen, not only that, you compile that, which is in the same collegiate NCAA land, uh, landscape, and you see the Nick Sabans leave, Harbaugh get out, get back yeah. to the league. Uh, a guy leaves Boston College and goes to the league as a coordinator. Like, fuck this. I want out. Chip Kelly gives up a head job to go be a coordinator in the same power five college conf like, you know, college football. It's not like he left to the league. These guys don't want to fucking do it no more. And Bill self is basically saying, I'm going to keep doing it. At least, at least he said, I'm going to keep doing it, but I'm going to look forward and I'm going to rebuild this thing. Cause I don't like being average and it's easy to be average. It's hard to be different. That's what he's saying. And I don't understand it, but it's only the guys that never played or coach saying that they have an issue with it. And it, they're okay with players doing it and leaving like a no question asked, go ahead, take my NIL and leave. Uh, but they don't, they're mad at a coach for holding a guy to the carpet. I, I had that problem, but I don't know. Yeah, they uh, got, I mean, they got run into the building on Saturday. Gonzaga destroyed them in the second half. Um, just not a normal Kansas type performance, but look again, they had a lot of injuries this year. The best player, uh, didn't even play in this tournament. So right. you give them a little bit of a, you know, of a, of a ledge there, but like I said, they got a top 10 recruit coming in. They have another opportunity to get another one as well. He, he's still undecided. So th they'll be fine. Um, speaking of betting, how'd you do over the weekend? I went four and two on my picks that I picked. I picked six picks. I, I had to pick a dark horse. I picked, I picked, uh, Grand Canyon to upset Alabama. I, I didn't think that was too crazy. They were up late. They got outscored 10 0 in the last fucking two minutes or that. I thought they could, they had the game. I was like, oh, fuck, they're up two. They, I think they went up three even. And then they choked it off. Um, where are you, uh, how are you this weekend? No, uh, it's not been a good season for me at all. You know, I'm, I'm really, really just, I'm looking forward to the season ending, to be honest. I'm, 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 no, you looking can't say that. You can't be a forward thinker, Jeff. Well, listen, I mean, I think you have to just kind of realize that you just don't have it this year. And it's not been a good season. I just can't seem to get much luck. And, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. So hey, it's funny because Kelly fake in Vegas uh, texting me saying the same shit. And I and I and I'm I'm asking you as a professional because you are. And so is Kelly and these other people that I, I look to and, and as for advice, obviously, big time people have, have came to you for advice in this profession that have won money. Um I'm curious, though, is it not true what I said months ago? Like, it's got to be near an impossibility to bet on basically mercenaries 
who are moving from school to school to school every semester, how are you really going to – how do you play a Bill Self into this? Like, all right, he's a great coach. He's going to create a culture. He's going to coach these guys up. He can't. You can't do it with mercenaries, dog. It's basically whatever best five is out there is going to probably win your money. Well, listen, no, but- I, basketball is different, though. Let me jump in real quick because – even be, even before the transfer portal, guys, they weren't transferring to another team. They were traveling to the NBA. You know what I'm saying? Because NBA is, I mean, college basketball is the one sport where you can go play one year and then get up out of there anyway. So these schools have been having to re, reboot and rebuild every single year. Nah, not like this. But but it wasn't. I mean, the, the losses that I take are are just little shit, you know? You have 37 free throw attempts and you make 23. I mean, they you know, there's not much I can do about that. And, you know, it, it's – I had some rough ones. I've had rough ones all year. I just haven't gotten any luck in these types of games. It is what it is. I think you're you're on to something, though. I think it's becoming harder and harder. I think the quality of this tournament it has went down significantly, precipitously. Um, and, and, yeah, I think I think the tournament and, and even college sports in general have, have definitely had issues. Yeah, so, so, so talk about it, though. So tell people because I I get take heat because I say this is not – Parity. It's not equality. But, 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 it's but, not any of that shit. It's there's a happy medium too, because then people like people always they only want is upsets, right? In the first couple of rounds. And then the upsets happen. And then we have a sweet 16 where you look at this season. I mean, make this clear. The first three games yesterday, two of them were decided by 38 or more points. I mean, that's a that's the that's that's what happens when you have upsets, right? That that shouldn't happen. That the games suck. I mean, I'm yeah, sort of like, exactly. I'm trying to figure out like how people think Matt came on and said, I was like, what, what tournament are you watching? I've seen a shit tournament. I don't know about everybody else. I'm like, what I do mean, you there mean? Been a game, there have been games or two where like Houston A&M was a good one. You know, there's yeah. been, there's been a few, but the problem we have is more games have been hard to watch. Look at San Diego state blew it up, uh, blew them out. UConn blew them out. I mean, it was Blood City. Purdue uh, forty by forty. Come yeah, on, there were two games in a, in a second round. You don't see that, and when it's really good, this is watered down, man. I don't understand why people don't really understand the fuck me. What I mean by watered down? Why have I had professionals on this show that talked about this is this is a watered down product? It's not good for fucking sports. I'm just telling you, it's not. You can't just have these motherfuckers running around every semester. It's, it's not like it's a year to Smitty's point. They're not transferring every year no more. They're transferring every semester. That means there's a new culture has to be re-envisionized every semester at these programs. It's an impossibility to grow, teach, teach fundamentals, um, get mature, take an ass ripping and, and stay put and understand this is not how to do things. Like, we're just chasing greener pastures. This is horrible, man. Fucking football, basketball, it's all shitty. And I'll, keep, I'll make this clear, too. I mean, I was, you know, Yale was playing last night, San Diego State. I, you know what I was watching? I was watching the women. Iowa State, Stanford, great game, very good game. I mean, it's not really my thing, but it was a good game. You know, it's, you know, it's a little easier on the eyes. Shorty, right? from, Shorty from Stanford was hooping too, right? If I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah. Beautiful woman as well. Uh, like, let, let me be honest. 40, 40 spots. About 40. Yeah. Very impressive. I want to be honest. This is what's – this is this is perfect timing. This is breaking news. But Kyle Smith, the head coach at Wazoo, just right. left and took the head job at Stanford. Please tell me when in the world of sports this would ever happen, ever. Pac-12 to Pac-12, but they're not the Pac-12 anymore. That's my point. It's just crazy, though. It, this shit is crazy. Like, there's just – you would never see that shit. You wouldn't see well, Oregon State go to another conference on. like like, we, like like Jonathan Smith did. I mean, we've seen coaches – I mean, didn't yeah. – uh, I'm trying to – there's been a few in college football that have done it. No. Not in the same <laughs> conference the same year. I feel like uh, didn't Lane Kiffin do it? I'm, uh, maybe not. No, no, no. He went from Tennessee to SC back. And then back. Okay, so. He went to Raiders, 
Tennessee. Yeah, I don't understand that, the, the Washington State to Stanford. But then again, I do. I mean, but Stanford I, is- I do. Yeah, I agree. I'm not knocking it. I agree now, because. but but my point is that's what we've created. We've created a basically free-for-all. That's basically what I can – I don't know what else to say. It's a free-for-all. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you another thing on your level of what is ruining college sports, and, and I'll be the first to say it. I, I've, I've gambled for a very long time. Gambling is destroying sports as well, at mm. least to me. Um, I, I, I loved when gambling were, were – I loved when really I was the only one doing it. There, there were a select few doing it. The fact that gambling now is so pervasive, it's de- it's destroying it from the inside. Because you know what, what Jeff? Is- I, I will say that that's good you are. JB and I, sorry to tell you, we'll be actually joining you and doing a little bit more gambling. So we'll be adding some more fuel to the fire. So just letting you know that. No, no, it's not – It's I not. That. It, you, you, you folks have played the game. You, you have an intimate knowledge of, of it. Now is – just this parlay bullshit that these young kids that have no fucking idea what they're doing. Everybody can gamble now. Um, it's, it's really disastrous. I mean, I think it's destroyed it. And what are we seeing? Goofy people threatening people. If they don't get a fucking cover on a $25 bet. I mean, look, look at the guy last night, JB breaking your balls guys betting $25 a game, fucking breaking balls. Like fuck off, man. Like it, gambling is, is is destroying it from the inside and you, you know now look is how many players every year from different sports are, are now getting involved and what yeah. can you break down what's going on DraftKings and FanDuel I know are the big dogs that have come out basically and creating live in play or something Smitty and I were talking about the other day like if if I continue to throw fentanyl and and crack and coke at at the people in the community they're eventually going to they can't resist it no more. They're going to do it. They're going to take it. Yeah. We're throwing betting out there on, on these guys. And you wonder why Williams got suspended and Ridley and all the dog, you're throwing the pussy at them and telling them, no, don't fuck it. Like what? Like, I don't understand the, the fact that we're just throwing it in our face. And then yet we're going to suspend a guy. Oh, to, to now, now your take may be different. Jeff than last week, about not doing anything illegal. I don't know if you've seen this. Bailey, can we show the Otani new news uh, that has come out? This, the, the, the Major League Baseball is now announcing that they are going to investigate. Last week when Jeff was on, they said they would not. But now they're saying they're investigating for this reason. They found some tweets, apparently. Uh, basically, right here, Otani came out and bet on a game with the Angels. Um, let's see. It's right here. Otani throwing a thread in July of 22. A bet of a million dollars was placed for the Atlanta Braves to score over six and a half runs against the Angels. Parlayed with the Braves minus three and a half. The bet was placed with a bookie in Misuwasawa, Shohani's hometown, the pitcher for the Angels at the time. Okay. Then... The same day, Otani pitched and threw – this was his stats. Six innings pitched, six hits, six earned runs. Uh, at the plate, he was 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. Now, coincidence? Wait, so, so, hold on. Wait, hold on. I mean, hold on a second. Th- this, is, this is such – this is a very concerning thing about the world we live in. One fucking guy found one game. Look, look how many views these things get. Who the fuck is Timmy Smokes anyway? Some fucking Redditor jerk off that has 7,000 hours on his hands and he goes and nitpicks and finds one thing. How do we know he bet a million dollars? I mean, is this being, uh, has, has anyone looked into whether we, this actually. We, we don't know. It's, I mean, but this is, the, but this, don't is know. Wrong, this is sad. This is what's wrong with society. We can allow anyone to post. I could say right now, I'm fucking Al Capone's grandson. He, he's my grandfather. I, and, and the only I the I'm, only reason I brought it up, Jeff, I, I can say anything I want. We can the only reason I brought it up is because I know you made the take because he didn't do anything, and his either did his bookie or whatever, or his bookie did, but not him or his translator, because betting's not illegal regardless of what people want to think, which is great. We took that, and, and I, I agreed. The, the only thing is, if this is to come true, the only reason we show this is because what if a, if was a fifth, we'd all be loaded type of mentality. Um, then you have to bring back the the topic we had, which was Pete Rose, because now you're in the same wheelhouse. Now Pete Rose either A, needs to be put back in, or Otani B, needs to be put out. Like, this is what's going to end up happening 
And this is why these things, now I think why the Major League Baseball took it and said, now we're going to investigate. Last week, they weren't investigating. They didn't give a fuck. So now, all of a sudden, it's changed. And that's why I'm asking you, someone that knows more than me, well, why are they now investigating it? I, I guess something case. popped up or they felt that the pressure from – the public to look into it. Listen, they'll find out what's going on. Their security, MLB security is quite. Yeah. Same as NFL. They're all FBI, FBI, CIA. They're all ex major military. They're fucking legit. Now I deal with NFL security. Trust me. They're fucking. They'll, not um, they'll, they'll locate what's going on here. Uh, we'll see. Um, I, I don't know, but, but I think it's sad that someone could just post shit and, and it can run the way it does. It, what happened to, to media where, where we actually did some digging and investigation? Investigate. We have a lot of, uh, I call it irresponsible reporting. That's what the world is on now because they, they want to get likes and tweets. We're all in the same business. We all want to do it now. Let's get yeah. a, we want a million views. Whatever it is, we got to do some crazy shit. Smitty and I, at least, and you, try to stay without making up some shit we kind of try to stay honest so we're not going to try there's no more journalism in this in this if, uh, in an hour there was a, a, a report that come out that a nuclear missile was coming towards this country would anyone believe it or or would it just be oh I, like what can you believe like yeah. what, Anything that happened? Can you believe anything? Last night I saw a bunch of uh, what was it? Solar flares are gonna hit us, and we're gonna have a fucking like you you mix that with. The well, that's the lunar eclipse. The lunar. Well, they, no, the eclipse. There's a whole other thing now. They're saying that there's a solar flare up that's gonna give some type of technology. Uh, they're gonna put it's gonna put our technology in in a fry, and we're gonna be all fucked up. I I'm like, do we believe that? Like. I'm over here searching it up, and I can't even see nothing. You know what I mean? Like, what are we doing? Well, I think we got to stop. You know, we all do it. We all go to Twitter and social media, and then, like, somebody makes a post, like Jeff alluded to, and then we like, oh, damn, this is – I'm like, nah, bro. I was like, you got to be your own digging. Like, sometimes that stuff be is true and it's right, but you got to see something and then go to – like Matt said, go to Google. Do your own research, your homework, on to to, to to and read some articles, some hey, journals, Smitty. and see if there's that some truth happen. to it. But Twitter, like, anybody on Twitter, Google or whatever, has shit too. Google this, is, um, this country, I mean, it is amazing how stupid people are. Ignorant, they don't know anything. Like honestly, most of America can't tell you what the capital of this country is. Uh, they don't no. know fuck all about anything. No, they no, they're all social they, security number. Yeah, they'll take every – it's amazing how – just it's sad how misinformed people are. They don't know how to react when they get pulled over or the cops knock on their door or something. They, they have no idea about anything, nothing. It's, but it's like really Smitty, Smitty, Smitty said it like playing, but like the real world thinks Google is a true sort si source site. No, well, it's, listen, not. It, it's, it's not it's, even it's, real. Well, it, me, it has to sit on Google. People on. put it on there. Hold on a second. Listen, you're you're not wrong. There, there is definitely bad sourcing on Google. Um, but if you know where to go and look, okay, yeah, you know, that's, that's what I was saying. Yeah. Like, obviously, there's parody things and shit like that. But it, I'm I'm fascinated by the stupidity and ignorance of yeah. ninety percent of people. Really. Like, there there are some true, real deal sources. Like, sure. that you know what to go to. Don't learn your your whole shit on Wikipedia. That's just lazy. No. If you do a deep dive and know who, like, what to go into. All I'm saying is, a lot of times, like we're all we're, we all fall victim to it. We live in this microwave society. We want everything to us right now. We want everything easy, quick, no work, just as easy as we probably can. So we see something on Twitter, you know, uh, oh, Darnell Smith and JB got in a huge fight. Uh, they don't just believe it. And then it's like, well, hold on. Do you, like, do you, do you guys look. know? So I got to I learn I got to learn this in this this whole fucking movie making world because even though I was in a documentary, I got to see all these producers meet these people and learn a couple of the spaces. Do you know who creates Wikipedia and 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 who puts what's on there on there? I do. Who? Well, if you go on Wikipedia, if you search Donald Trump, okay, Wikipedia, every line is sourced from newspapers right general most of the stuff is sourced that said people can go in and change them but they have a better policy now on removal of things of that nature. well here, here's my point 
We do. We do. We bro. make Wikipedia how we want it. I, I would we always say Wikipedia, bro. We do whatever we want to say on Wikipedia. I, how I would always. I, I use make up anything. So when I do a show on the sit down, right, I use sourcing. But look, if I go to Wikipedia and find a birthday, I would cross source it with something else to make sure that multiple sources have it. Right. I'm not going to just go off of what it says, but you have to dig deeper on things. You have to go into, you know, my my always thought is go into court records, um, you know, indictments, things of that nature. You can find out a lot about someone through a court indictment. Right. If they've ever been arrested, they, they look in. There's all sorts of stuff you can find there. But yeah, Wikipedia is not. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't use it as the sole source. No. All right, Jeff, before we get into some uh, March six, uh, Sweet 16, we got a breaking news we broke earlier. It, we didn't break it, but it uh, we, we want to talk about it and get your guys' take on it. Uh, it happened. Uh, we missed Matt on this one, but apparently the uh, the hip drop tackle that I was telling Steve Kim about a long time ago is probably more dangerous, in my opinion, than the helmet to helmet. Um, not that doesn't mean I want it to be banned, but anyway, that's a whole other thing. Let's get your take on this. Uh, this is just becoming cringe worthy for me. Um, I just, I, I just don't know when it ends. Um, but we banned the hip top drop tackle, uh, Smitty and uh, Matt. I mean, and Jeff, I don't know where you, where, what you guys, it's, it's horrible. It's horrible. I've it. been standing on this side of fence from the beginning. You're trying to make a unsafe sport safe you're trying to make a contact physical sport safe hip drop tackle i've never even heard of the term personally until this past year i understand the the the, the risk and why players are getting hurt but it's very very rare that this even happens where players do get hurt number one number two football is a bang bang sport at the end of the day as a defensive player you are trying to chase down this guy going 100 miles per hour and stop them from getting to their destination, whether it's a first down or a touchdown. I understand in a perfect world, you want to get in front of the guy, bend your knees, keep put it, you know, head to the side, wrap up, keep your feet driving. We are, we've all been trained on how to properly tackle, but in a football game, when things are happening so fast and there's weird angles that are happening, you don't that perfect form tackle rarely happens throughout an entire game because there's certain things in the game you can't fully practice for because it just it just happens. There's certain angles, it just this just happened. He turned to the side, the guy's running past him, he's trying to grab him immediately and bring him down. His he has no time to get in front of him and get square and make sure. He's just hitting them. And all they're doing right now is making the game extremely difficult to play defense and reaction. And, and, and the reason behind that is to create more offense, more scoring, and more casuals to come in and watch the sport. I hate it. It's just ridiculous. It's stupid. It makes no sense. It, uh, I'm glad players have come out and voiced it like these guys. Look at Lonnie Johnson, my our kid, my kid. Uh, um. That's a good tweet by Holland. <laughs> by who? Javon Holland. That's funny. Oh, yeah. Here's my take on this. Uh, it's ironic. Smitty and I had a couple of the, the people that were very, well, actually the two main people involved in, in getting our governor in California, Newsom, to veto a shithole bill, which was to ban youth tackle football here in California. Since we did that very few months ago, Smitty, I don't know if you've heard the news, they brought it back. They're trying to eliminate it again. They've reissued the bill again. Why did that bill get issued last night? Everyone's hitting me up. McCarthy, our fucking bullshit politician, has brought it back up, even though Newsom banned it or vetoed it. Now they're bringing it back up the same day that this happens in the NFL. Now it's ironic that the NFL PA and the youth tackle football thing have a, they're in bed together. And now all of a sudden you see California bring this rule up again. The most popular state in the union brings back the let's get rid of youth tackle football. And then you see the NFL ban a tackle rule. It's very ironic. Nobody's going to talk about that, but I wanted to be the first one to bring it up and correlate the two. Um, they are in bed together, the NFL and the NFLPA with the Youth Tackle Football um, Association. So 
it doesn't shock me at all that these two things happen within 24 hours of each other. Uh, this is a joke. It's really a mockery. It's not going to change into, unless you put your foot down and change it. By the way, Jeff, by the way, before you say something, they already also approve giving a team a third challenge if they get one of their first two correct. That also went into effect today. What are we fucking doing? I've so been on for along the game. I've been on for about 20 minutes. And what have we talked about? We've talked about in various sports at various levels, the continuing destroying it. We have to wonder how long will this last? How, how can we continue to operate a sport like this and basically say you can't tackle? And Smitty, that was a really well done breakdown of how 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 would you decide in, in the split section? We have to decide whether to make a tackle or not. I had to make sure I don't hit him here or, or to show, like, it's crazy to think about how do we continue to um, have a sport that, that can operate this way? I, I, and I think you're right for someone like myself who's a gambler, I'm going to say, okay, well, this is going to somehow down the road, precipitously make scoring a lot higher. How long can you keep making rules like this before the sport cannibalizes itself? How long can you, you know, and, and again, we've talked about college football, college basketball, the NFL, the NBA is a fucking shit product. I mean, MLB, I mean, they, they continue to make rule changes. I mean, how can sports continue to go on like this? I mean, this is the this is know. the this is what I mean, let's just be honest. Like, I'm the I'm gonna be one of the only ones to stand out there and say it. Like, this is why I don't want women coaching in the NFL, but this is why they're allowing women to coach. It always comes back to this somehow. Yeah, let's be honest though. This is why they're allowing women to coach the NFL. Let's just keep it real. Let's just keep it 100. This, these gr women can coach in a league that's not a gladiator sport. Let's just keep it real. Why would you want women in a gladiator sport? Because you're going to transition that gladiator sport into a more conducive sport for women. Like, this is an all-inclusive billion-dollar industry, and now we have to have everybody involved. It was first, you know, the rainbow flags and shit that we had put up all in the end zones. And now it's, you know, youth sports. Now we want to ban youth sports, but now we want to have women can coach um, in a sport that isn't as violent as it once was. It just it's not optically, Jeff, that's not a bad look if a woman is in that sport coaching it or refing it or whatever, if it's not as violent as it once was. Like, that's why it correlates fanboys in the chat. That's why it has to do with women. So we're going to we're going to continue to see a shift to Jeff's point. And it's and I just want to know what is ours. That's all I want to ask you guys. I want to know what the fuck does a man have anymore? Please let me know. Being a mechanic uh, construction like what? Oh, the things you need. What is a man's fucking area and space anymore? We have to fucking adhere to made up humans, to women taking over fucking coaching NFL football. Like, but we allow it, homie. Like, nobody wants to Listen, fucking JB, stand up. Jeff, nobody wants to stand up and say it. But, I'm not the guy. I'm saying it. I'm saying it. Like, I'm until, tired of it. I'm going to be honest. I'm fucking tired of it. But until, we have spaces that should be ours, Jeff, and women have spaces though. that should be theirs. But it doesn't matter, though, mm. because next September, when the NFL starts, every stadium will be sold out and merchandise will be purchased. And, and, and no one will actually step up and do something that's going to hurt anybody's wallet. And people but just Jeff, it here. is. It is contrary to belief. And we have proof of it. We've had major people come on and prove and show why it's changing. We just don't know. The optics see the stadium full, but it's actually being filled by corporate America. It's not the normal fan anymore. Jeff, if apparently groceries are very high price, apparently gas is very high. But apparently, it doesn't matter. People still have to buy them regardless. Fuck yeah. it. it doesn't matter. Well, that's what I'm saying, though. Right. But if I buy them as a corporate meet America and I place people in those seats as giveaways to make my company look better, which we all do, we know that's the business, then we all think it's optically full. But, but JB, listen because to this. Jeff, you, I, and Smitty, maybe we can afford a ticket or two, but we're not affording $10,000 seats at the but, Super Bowl. It doesn't matter. 
Okay, here and here's the way I'll relate it. If I do a YouTube show and some fuckhead troll watches it, it counts as a view. And if someone that loves me watches it, it counts as a view. So as long as those seats are filled, who gives a fuck who's sitting in them? That's how they look at it. People will buy them. There's a lot of rich people in this country. A lot. We have the most millionaires by a fucking wide margin on the planet. They will be filled. No one cares if it's the stadium's loud as long as it's full. And as long as that gate ticket, that keeps being sold. That's all that matters. And you're right. The sport will begin to suck more and more because you don't have those people painting their faces and that kind of thing. People love that. But then again, do you also want the fucking idiots throwing up on each other in the city that, you know, in the area that I'm in, Philadelphia, where it's a short, that's a short, that's a quick fix and a short one in a long term of things. It, to your point, this country will it might look good now, it. Jeff. It ain't gonna look good in five years when the the casual normal fan, their fan base for the Steelers that are still mill workers, can't go to a game and that's they only true. watch it on TV. That's when the viewership will be decline, and you're gonna have a problem on your hands. These fat cat owners don't care as long as the tickets are being sold. Yeah, and that's and and I'm not telling you it's right. It's sad. It sucks, but I think on the on the flip. Those mill workers that you're talking about, you know what they'll do? Because they can't help themselves. They will still watch the game. It's just the truth. They can't help themselves. And until people stand up and say, I ain't watching it anymore. You know, oh. look at all these tough guys that talked. I'm not watching it because it's woke. You still fucking watched it. Shut up. You know, I I, I just don't, uh, I don't think it'll matter. It sucks, but. As long as the seats are full, they don't care. That's all they care about. The problem is it's trickling down into college and then high school, and then that's what's making it go back up to the NFL, at the NFL level, when people are like Dion are saying, oh, my son shouldn't go here, there, there, and then we're picking and choosing where we go. And it's like, fuck, man, there ain't no pecking order. There's no hierarchy. There's no nothing. I just got a text message as we're talking right now. Oh, I see, oh, I see that. Yeah, we. I just got a text message right now. We had a quarterback committed to a Pac-12 or Big Ten now school among multiple other Power 5 offers. He just left us to go to School B here in California. For what? You already have tons of offers. You left our whole team hanging. It's happening at the high school level, then perpetuating into college. And they're trying to do what college players are doing. You already have Power 5 offers. You've been at this school for three years, and now you're just leaving to go to another high school for what? It, it, the same offers are going to be there. Uh, you already it's not, I can see if you don't have any offers, but you already are a big-time quarterback and have a ton of offers, and you just transferred to another school because they're paying. They're doing things. It's like, dog, what are we setting these cats up for? It, it's, it's, just, it's, it's me, 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 and you wonder why we have a shit-ass product on the court, on the field, in college athletics, all around, I just. But you also look at, at what has built some of these sports, you know, and it's like in basketball. The, one of the insular ways to win basketball games is playing defense, right? right. Defense is going out the window. I want to explain. Do you know? Okay, and I watch for whatever reason. I know a lot about it. Division two basketball. Okay, there are like eight teams that are in the final uh, at sixteen. They score a hundred or more points a game. In a 40-minute basketball game. I mean, it's up and down. There's no defense. It's just take a bunch of threes and play no defense. How long can these products continue to last with shit like this? And you know a lot of those Division II kids, you know where they're going to go? Division One, And they're going to take it all there. Coaches don't care about defense. Alabama's in Sweet 16. They don't play a fucking lick of defense. You know, Purdue, all these teams. It's all about offense, offense, offense. These, these leagues can't operate like it. It's all sorts of shit. It, there's all sorts of things. Steph Curry, great player, but he has done a lot. I mean, if you look at some of the things that have happened due to the Steph Curry effect, where people mm -hmm. aren't Steph Curry, they think they're Steph Curry. That is destroying the NBA. That is destroying college. Uh, it's it's rough. Steph Curry is Steph Curry. He's one of one. You ain't fucking Steph Curry. Play some fucking defense and stop the fucking threes every game. Purdue is a kid that's seven fucking five, and they shoot a fucking three ball every every possession. Matt, this is what's going to happen though. This will eventually happen. The Panthers, which is owned by the richest owner in football, had nobody there, and I, and this is going to end up happening because corporate America at, at some point will say, "I'm not going to show up to a team that's one in fifteen, and that is going to end up killing the league. 
it, and that is my point in this whole thing. Like, what we're gonna keep allowing this to happen. You're gonna exile your true fan bases. Like, there's a fan base, I guarantee, if they had the right people in place in Carolina, they still would have showed up to support them because we know there's fanboys everywhere right now. Just because they're a shitty team and the corporate America didn't fill those seats up for that shitty last game of the season, we're going to have problems, Houston. And I'm just telling you, it's going to happen shortly. Let's dive into March Madness, Jeff. Uh, Sweet 16, I think it's the first time every one in every two seed has advanced. That's a telltale sign right there on what we're kind of talking about. Like, we talk about parity, and, and I'll, I say water down. Like, there's this is not good fucking basketball, bro. I, I, I'm just going to be honest. And every one and two seeds advance. Cool. I think uh, what you have, though. Is that good or bad? Yeah, I think I, I couldn't disagree more. I, I think you have the potential this weekend, though, this coming week, to have some unbelievable games. There's some great matchups. I gotta tell you, and 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 I don't I don't I don't go to events like this. I don't go to games anymore. It's not my thing. I have given a long thought on going out to Detroit for the sweet six for, for these four games or three games. I mean, you got Creighton, Tennessee, you got Purdue. Gonzaga, you got some great games. I can be in Detroit in an hour and a half, man. Um, I, I'm giving strong thought. I, I think that's the good thing you have here. Yeah, the game sucked last weekend, but I think what it sets up for is – Can you great... get in, the motherfucker? What's that? Can you get in there? Would it, can I get in the building? Yeah, like what's prices on that bitch? What's what's the – what's the is, is there tickets available? I, I think for, for the all-session thing, which you'd get both games Friday – and then Sunday you'd get the one game. It was like for, for all of it, like five seventy, I think. Oh, that's not bad for We're everything. Uh, now you know, for me, I you know, I, it's it's an experience. You know, I but I think that's what you have here: Duke, Houston, you know, Arizona, Carolina, and you got some, you got some great games. That's some real good games. So Let's San Diego State in revenge. They're in revenge. Remember, they got beat in the national title game against mm-hmm. UConn. So, and Jimmy, I, I thought you liked the fact that the the top teams make it. Like that was always yeah. like your argument about football. Some of that you was like, I, I don't know who's going to win every well, single week. It's watered down. Now the top dogs are winning. You should be happy. It, right. It's really not that. It's not. The, but it's not the. It's not the, the. It's the. It's the. How do I say it? It's the the manner in which the process is being uh, the quality, like, like like I see you say. Purdue beating a team by 40 to get into this spot is Which, not a fucking good. You have to have your cake and eat it too, man. That's what you're going to have to get to this point. It but sucks. I, I hear you. It. This never used to be this way, though. You should never have a team losing by 40. That that should, that should never happen. Uh, it never has happened in the past. Purdue was like, they like that, though. That's the point. But Zach, they, but the best player in the world. Like they were smoking cats, but then they get into a Duke team that fucking slows them down a little bit, and then they have a problem. They lose. Like this, this they, is they're like, gonna have some problems this week. Uh, Gonzaga is gonna give them some issues. Gonzaga is really good, man. Purdue's still gonna uh, win, though. But let's yeah. dive into it. Thursday's games, the twenty eighth. Uh, UConn, San Diego State. You just mentioned replay of the national championship. Um, where are you at with that? San Diego State's looked pretty decent so far. Uh, I'm glad they're still in it. They're showing that they that, that, that even though they lost some things, they're back in it. Uh, UConn, to some, is the most loaded team in college basketball. Where are you at with this one? All you're going to hear is, you know, UConn. UConn all UConn's doing is is uh, whining. You know, they got you know they got to do this. They're going to do that. Games in Brooklyn. It's a great spot for them. I think this is a tough game for for UConn. They haven't really been tested in either game so far. They got lucky that Auburn lost. I think Auburn would have been a tough matchup, but I think San Diego State's going to be a tough matchup. Very experienced team. I mentioned this is if there's a revenge game, it's this. This team beat you to fuck up in the national title game last year. Um, San Diego State has the bigs to deal with Klingon. You're getting 10 points in this game. I'm going to definitely look towards maybe t- grabbing San Diego State. Do I think they can win? I don't think. Um, but I think it's going to be a, a competitive game. UConn hasn't been tested in a, in a while. Uh, dropping down to another good one, Illinois-Iowa State. Yeah. That's another matchup. Guard, good guard play on both sides, right? This is a team that wants to go – up and down, and it's a really good offense. They've been the best offense, in Illinois, since February 1st in the country. Iowa State's been the best defense in the country. So this is pick your poison. Who do you want more? Um, I actually find Iowa State's 
offense to be better than people think. I like Tame and Lindsey a lot. They have this freshman, Mamalakovich, terrific player. Um, I like defense over offense. Illinois can't guard me, Smitty, JB, and two listeners. I like <laughs> Iowa State here to advance. Um, going on to the other matchup uh, on the 29th, Houston-Duke. Um, that's an intriguing one. I thought James Madison was going to play way better. They have got fucking torched. It, is Duke – a real contender here? They look like it. I mean, that's they had two really – Vermont's a tough team as well. They beat two really good teams. Filipowski didn't even really play well the first game, but they're running into a team that's firing on all cylinders. I'll keep saying it, though, and the concern for Houston is going to catch up to itself at some point. They cannot guard without fouling. They're an elite defense, but they – I mean, Texas A&M had 45 free throws last night. They had four players foul out Houston – um, you can't continue to operate like this. They don't have the depth right now. Um, that said, I think Houston will take care of Duke, but they're going to get caught up to it at some point. Houston's really good. Chet is fantastic. I'm going to make a, my upset pick of the week is going to be this one that I make later on this week. But uh, I, I think Marquette, to to get to the Final Four, has to get – obviously, have to get to this game. I think if they get through this game, I think Marquette is a serious – contender but i think nc state's going to give them all they can handle i think mm. they're on high i think they're rolling right now and i think nc state is going to come to a close game i hope finally i think nc state's going to get marquette yeah so i i have i have too much i bet it again last night i have an insane amount tied up in marquette i think marquette's going to win the national title i really do i think this team is I, I think this team is nasty at every level. Kol- Kolik is is a beast. Um, they're so talented on both ends, and I think they're just a better version of NC State. It's been a nice run for them. I just I think eventually it's going to catch up to them. Play. I mean, they've played seven games in twelve days. That's insane. Now they have some time off here, um, but I think Marquette's a better version of NC State. I think Marquette has some of the the bigs to deal with. DJ Burns, who. You gotta you gotta give some credit to he's a big kid, man. My God. I mean, he's quite conditioned well to to play in these games. He's a big dude, man. He's not he's not exactly lanky either. He's a he's a he's a big dude. Um I like Marquette though. I'm not I think NC State runs into uh the end of the road here. Damn. Um uh, all right. Carolina Bama. Bama, like you said, doesn't play any defense. I just think they're going to be out man in this game all around from what I've seen these two teams. Uh, you think Carolina have an issue? Some guy says Marquette's the worst team in the bracket. Shaka Smart's a fraud. Yet they're in the Sweet 16 and are a six-and-a-half-point favorite to advance to the Elite Eight. Um, what the fuck do some of these people uh, – Isaac, have you watched a fucking college <laughs> basketball game all year? You fucking idiot. Holy shit. Uh, what was the game? Carolina, Arizona. This is a great one. Caleb Love playing his old team. He was at Carolina. Now he's at Arizona. Going to be a great battle with R.J. Davis. This is a complete coin flip, man. Man, this is an uh, interesting game. I lean Arizona, though. I I think they're more well-coached. I like Tommy Lloyd. I think their bigs are a little bit better all-encompassed. Going to be a great battle. Like, I'm I'm leaning towards – like, I had Arizona in my final four. I think Arizona is a serious contender. Uh – and I know I took your word for it earlier in the year. You're like, you know, I was like, aren't they a one? And you're like, ah, they got beat by Wazoo twice. They lost to Oregon. I said, and I was like, fuck. And then now they're looking like a one again to me. So I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Tennessee Creighton, very intriguing too. Do you, you like that matchup, I think, right? Yeah, I do. I do. I, I, I've said before, I believe Dalton Connect is the best player in the country. I, I would, I, 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 you know, just as a guard, I think he's that dominating it and Zach Eady is a large guy uh, it's it's definitely easy to be good that big that said Creighton <laughs> Cr- Creighton Hold on, out. what you what you what you trying to say like what you I, I don't well, he's, I, 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 I feel like it was a little bit of a jab at, at Zach well he's seven foot five I mean he should be able to dominate kids that are six eight I mean it's it's not hard to understand it's like if if I if, if you played against you know seventh graders you, know, you you would probably have success I mean it's he is just bigger than everybody else. Um, I think there are ways to combat him, and I think Creighton could do it. I think Gonzaga can do it. Um, that said, this is a great game, Creighton, Tennessee. I didn't always believe in Creighton. They're very reliant on threes, which is a quick way to lose at times. Tennessee needs to step up defensively. They have not looked like the same team. 
this would be another great game. These are hard because I haven't looked too deep into them. I'm, I'm just kind of going off the top of my head. This is another coin flippy game. I haven't decided who I'm going to pick yet. I'm leaning towards Creighton, but – and Creighton has a chip on their shoulder. They probably should have beat San Diego State last year. Really rough call with a second left. Um, I don't know. I haven't picked this one yet. Where you at with Purdue-Gonzaga? That's obviously the one. I know Smitty has Purdue winning it. Um, where are you at with this game? Yeah, I mean, one of the one of the, the prevailing things that I've mentioned all year with Purdue, and to say something good about Zach Eady, is they have him and no one else does. And and that's a lot of the time the difference. They beat Gonzaga in the Maui Invitation. They beat Tennessee in the Maui Invitation. And my only reason for taking Purdue in both games was one team has Eady and the others don't. Mm. Uh, and that's going to be the big thing in a lot of these games. Though, I'm just not a huge fan of the rest of Purdue. I don't love their guard play. I think their wings are, are questionable. And I think Grambling in the first half showed the way you can attack and beat Purdue. Getting into a good spot in that drop coverage and hitting jump shots. And Gonzaga is one of the best mid-range teams in the country. Um, and EK is a good player. He's not 7-5, but I think he could do a decent job. I think Mark Few will continue to surprise. Everybody said this was the worst Gonzaga team in a while. They weren't going to get into the tournament. I think I think Gonzaga can pull it out. Interesting. We're going to see, we gonna see JB. And I have, and I have I have Purdue in the final four. It's going to be very interesting, man. Uh, this this round, like Jeff said, it may be it's you know I wouldn't go watch it in person. Um, I just can't watch this. I couldn't go to a college football game in person. I can't do it unless I'm on the sideline for a coach or yeah. something. There's just no way. Uh, yeah, we don't like sports no more. Yeah, it's kind of it's getting that way. Though. We hate sports. It's getting that way, Jeff. Like, fuck you. me, man. I hate to say that it's true, but it's sure getting that way, man. It's like, it's not shit no more, Jeff. It's like oh, I can't wait till April 10th. I'm just disappearing for three months. I'm out. Where you going? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go play poker. I'm gonna get back into you know just doing things that I enjoy. Sports, I'm I'm tired of. I want to just disappear for a while, and I'm gonna start just you know. Getting into some other things. I have an idea for more podcasts, like different things. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. You know, I think JB. I think we're gonna do the same thing. April 10th will be the same day. I think we'll probably just disappear from this show, from from work. From well, everything. and I want to also travel, come out and see you guys. Like I want, I want to just put more into like my life and not like like we I'm just turn this into a sob story ass show. Everybody's sad. But, but, but it's just, uh, I it's sit here all day and just. It sucks. I'm getting JB tired. and I are gonna are, we're gonna shut down our Instagram and our Twitters, and you know no, you, you're not gonna hear from us for about a month or two. You're not gonna know what's gonna happen or what's going on. And we're gonna pop back out in June. You know, it's the funny. Studio. There's a commenter in the chat called Dick, and he says Jeff is the kid who had a permanent doctor's note to avoid gym class. You want to hear a story about my dad? In 11th grade, I come home one day, report cards there, and I failed gym. And my dad says to me, how the fuck did you fail Jim? All you got to do is dress up. I said, Dad, Jim was the first period of the day for me. I got really unlucky with it. And I told him, I said, Dad, I got brand new sneakers on. The last thing I want to do is sweat all that, sweat at gym and have to sit through that all day. I just decided I'm not going to dress. I'm going to hang out, talk to girls. Fuck Jim. I don't want to. What, what the fuck would I want to sweat at 7 a.m. in the morning and have to sit smelly like that for the rest of the fucking day? I'm hey, gonna, hey, hey, I would get up. See, hold on, time out. This one, no the difference in culture and generations have changed from generation to generation. We I used to have in first class every day. We had to shower. Yeah, I ain't doing that either. And see, the times have changed. Cats yeah, we, still I, we didn't do, we no didn't do that. Story. I ain't we doing that either. Hey, I'm, I'm not, honest, I have. I would fight for the gym all day against your take for the simple fact that. I truly believe by taking Jim out in California, they, they had a mandated hours, uh, a lot of hours. Now they don't because people refuse to dress out. Like you said, they refuse to do certain things. Back in the day, there was no refusing. Well, when we started allowing it and just got rid of fucking Jim and extracurricular activity, we created a obese nation, the most obese in the world. About a weekend, the, the coach, the, the, the teacher says to me, he didn't even acknowledge. He just knew I wasn't. I'm. I'm not doing it. I'm not. I'm. I'm I don't care about Jim. It, I'm not going to have my life defined because I failed Jim. Fuck Jim. I don't want to be sweaty. I'm just not doing it. 
I'm not. Yeah, I'm not taking a shower either. I just I miss the fact that we took it away because you can drive by a basketball court outside now in any neighborhood you don't see anyone on it like you don't see anyone outside playing. It, well, it's, that's it's, different. I mean, you can go home and you can go at any point. You know, I, I used to love gym. I ain't gonna lie, I used to love gym. Hey, we had part. lockers, right? Lockers. We had separate shoes in there. We had separate shit in there, and then you go shower and you fucking you go about your yeah, day. I didn't shower in high school though. Like it's crazy in hindsight. I'm like, dad probably was walking around stinking like a motherfucker. But like at that time, I was a kid. I wasn't even thinking about that. Like. I, I think I would go like you know get a towel and like you know wash your face off, but you just got dressed and it was a yeah I, going. it was the norm. You didn't even think about it. He was a kid running around, fucking you know what I'm saying? Like it also wasn't an excuse for you bigger than no. So you were small in high school? Yeah, I was regular. Oh, okay. Was, so you got big after? Yeah, I was. I was only like a, a larger guy, like for like a five year period. I I when I was a kid, I I was never like super skinny, but I also wasn't. No, I, no, I was asking that because you know a lot of fat cats that I grew up with that were bigger and, and were scared. They, that's why they stopped. They didn't want to go to gym. They were ashamed of their body. They didn't want to like. We see a lot of that shit when actually those cats need it, but they no, didn't no. want to. They, they were scared of their body. Same with girls. Girls were the same way. They didn't want to show off uh, if they had big titties or not. Like all those things played factors. Like, and then I became a coach and a teacher in that space, and I'm like, fuck, you see it. You know what I'm saying? You see what kids went through as, as when we you were. Want to see a picture of me in high school? I, I, uh, I'll, get, I'll get you a picture of me in high school. Bear with me a second. You guys got to see this. Um, yeah, I don't know, Smitty. We, I'm just telling you, fucking. I, I think it's a correlation, though. Why we don't play no more outside? Why it's gone? That, of, of course, our phones and, and access to everything's changed, but. At least if it was still mandated that you had to go to PE, it would at least have some sort of, fuck, I want to go play maybe extracurricular after school. We don't have any extracurricular after school sports no more. It's fuck crazy. No. Yes. But I just didn't want to, I just didn't want to dress in first period. They could have made it, you know, but I didn't get, even at at the end of the day, I wouldn't have did it either. Just don't want to do that. Um, Let me see. Well, it's already time, Smitty. Uh, got a lot going on. Uh, women in the red. We, <laughs> Coach always brings it back to women. <laughs> he always brings it back to women coaching. Bailey, show it, Bailey. Show it. Fuck it. Show what? That's uh, uh, in the air with a pump fake, hey, and he draws on. the foul. My CFL, my CFL woman. What are you trying to accomplish being so far away from us? So we can know the same. Who's, fa- who's faster? Who's faster? Exactly. Yeah, okay. Good thought. Use your speed. Take one step outside and then take the inside. But you don't need, you give him time to adjust to you when you're way out there. Make him make a fast decision. Just bumping. Oh! Good job. Looks like good coaching to me. <laughs> right. JB just mad because the fuck mother got blonde hair and breasts. It's a damn shame. Yeah, I mean, JB, you always bring it back to that. It's like you can't not talk about it. She asked him, what are you trying to accomplish? <laughs> Somebody in the chat earlier said, uh, I think it was Lucy. She said, What she said, what can we do? <laughs> yeah, what would you have said? I mean, <laughs> we can't do shit. Yeah. She asked that motherfucker, what are you trying to accomplish? <laughs> Listen, keep coaching, women. Ladies, we need more of you. <laughs> oh, fuck me. That was what you guys got going on the rest of the day. Jeff, that was embarrassing. I'm embarrassed for I'm the work. workout. I got to work. I got to deal with some shit in my apartment. I'm pissed right now. I'm going to talk offline about it. I'm, I'm pissed. You know what I'm saying? But I Jeff, stay on, stay on for a second, Jeff. We got to talk to you. Uh, we're going to get out of here. We will be back tomorrow live, uh, 6 to 9 a.m. Pacific. Follow the uh, Jeff on the Sit Down Crime Pod on TikTok, IG, and Twitter. Uh, Big Man on Campus on Twitter. Follow Jeff on all platforms as he has a great show on YouTube as well. Hey, Bailey, check your phone. This is what I looked like in high school. I wasn't a fat motherfucker. I was out there doing shit. You had had hoes? You know what's crazy? Like, I was was considered, like, the chubby kid growing up. And at that time, like, that shit would, like, hurt you. Like, damn, like, you could... 
But now, when I look at my pictures now, I wasn't even I wasn't even big, bro. Oh, Kids are just fucking crazy. I was yeah. I was not really big like that. Yeah. <laughs> nah. I hey, Mo, either. Mo, while we're waiting on this picture, I agree one hundred percent with you. That's the reason why I said what I said. Like we're supposed to now cater to the woman coaching us instead of actually playing and reacting to the sport. We're listening like, oh, fuck, I got to listen to her because if I don't, I'll be an asshole. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> look, at Ch- look at like straight out of fucking Soprano. Uh, what's the movie? Uh, God damn it. What's the Cousin movie? Skeeter, fucking Soprano. Fucking- uh, what, what, what's the show that he was an actor and shit? That's my <laughs> sister, you fucking losers. So don't say dumb shit. This motherfucker, look, look at Jeff. Jeff looking like a uh, fucking uh, look at Jeff. Jeff little skinny. Jeff, no, no, uh, hair slick back. Jeff, entourage, Jeff, entourage, Jeff, fucking entourage. Do I look like I'm gonna go to fucking gym class? Motherfucker <laughs> face big as hell, but his body small. Jeff was a gobble goo already in fucking eighth grade and ninth grade. That motherfucker was. That motherfucker will toss a piece of right now with one finger. <laughs> fucking Polly D. <laughs> motherfucker will fix some damn. Fucking pasta right now. That one will look good. The Jersey hey, Shore. Much love, Jeff. Uh, keep grinding. Hey, we always got highs and lows. Shit, Jeff blew up, got big, got back down. Look at him now, 208, living life. Uh, hey, lucky, you know, I'm 6'3". Smitty was fat. If you saw his picture on the thumbnail the other night on the after oh, hours. That. that was college football going to my senior year. I was 285 solid. Uh, Doc said, wonder years. Uh, one of my former bosses is in here. He's a huge fan of Jeff. Um, all right, we out. We'll see you tomorrow. And uh, pound that like, subscribe, become a member. Peace out. Issues get pressed so fast, you don't get sacked like bags and baggage. Smitty and Jason Brown killed the ass a rap. We were the